horrendous crash in turn number two that took Bobby Allison away from the sport and to the hospital here in Pennsylvania where he remains but is recovering. And we'll have an update on that a little later on in today's broadcast. His now permanent temporary replacement for the Cibola Brothers team is the Bush Grand National Series point leader Mike Alexander. Bob Heiss is with him down on the grid. Mike Alexander, is this is the third time that you've been subbing for Bobby Allison in this number 12 car. What's your feeling today starting this race and close to Bobby just a few miles away? Well, you know, we want to do the best job we can. It's, we don't want him on us after this race. He can sure be hostile at me. You know, we want to do especially good because he's making so many improvements right, right now and we're just tickled to death. And, you know, we hope we don't get to run this car much longer because that means he'll be back. This is really the first time you've been back at this track in a number of years to drive it, right? Well, 1981 was our first time, and, you know, we ran okay then, but we've got super equipment. These, are, these guys are really working hard, working hard for me, and they're working hard to get Bobby back, and I think him and Neil are sitting there watching this race, so we're hoping we can do well for both of them. I look at the front straightaway and the huge crowd here at Pocono International Raceway, and, Ron, it looks like the grandstand is certainly sold out, and this is one of the largest infield crowds we've seen here. Yeah, we definitely have a good crowd on hand, Mike. Uh, you know, with the weather we've had this morning, I believe everybody was a little late getting here, but uh, we're going to have a heck of a crowd on hand for this race. You see the starting field lined up, 42 cars. That will begin as the U.S. Air Force puts on an aerial display here. There's a good look of some of the high-performance equipment you won't be seeing on the... I hope nobody does that today on the racetrack. Setting the pole position for a NASCAR race has been a tough job in 1988 thus far. Ten different drivers have won pole positions in the 15 races, and twice pole winners include Davey Allison, Bill Elliott, Alan Kulwicki, who won the pole here last month, Ricky Rudd, and Ken Schrader. So a new face on the front row actually winning his second pole position of 1988. It's Morgan Shepard, and he's in a kind of unfamiliar race car. Uh, again, he's been driving Harry Gant's car for a while, and now you'll see him in brand new colors. Pat Patterson is with him. Well, we kidded Morgan Shepard earlier, Mike, about the fact that we're going to change his name to Morgan Designated Driver Shepard. You're in this car as really a result of Neil's accident, but you're on the pole for this race and ready to go at it. Well, I'm just tickled to death to uh, be able to sit in for Neil. You know, I'm tickled that they asked me to do it. And uh, I'd like to say hi to Bobby Allison that uh, is recuperating over in the hospital. And Bobby, we're all praying for you. We want you to get well. Uh, looking forward to seeing you and Neil's sitting there with him hi Neil I'm gonna do the best I can today uh, I'm gonna try to do a good job for you Morgan the Goodyear tires aren't here but you've been running on Hoosier tires all year so this is nothing new you know basically what kind of tires you got to deal with well I know the kind of tire that Bob Newton prepares for us and uh, you know that probably helped us out some getting the pole here it certainly was unselfish of Neil Bonnet to decide hey let's go ahead and let Morgan run that entire lap and not have to change drivers. That was unselfish of Neil, and I know it makes you feel good because you've got that much more chance of winning. Well, you know, I know it was probably a hard decision for Neil because he had to give up the points and everything. But uh, he wants the car to do good, and uh, we're going to do our best to get it there. Good luck today, Morgan. Thank you, Pat. Let's go down to Bob Heist. Harry Gant is sitting in the driver's seat getting ready to cinch up and be all ready to go here. And, Harry, it's been a number of weeks now since you've been behind this wheel in the Winston Cup circuit. It has. I guess it's been about eight weeks now, you know, and I'm glad to be back in here. It feels a little awkward, though. <laughs> a lot of the fans are concerned, want to know how that leg is doing and uh, how it's going to work today. you got 500 miles to go. Well, it's been doing pretty good. Uh, I hope everything will be okay today. It uh, handicaps you just a little bit, the weight of the cast and all, and you can't move your foot. But uh, we're going to do the best we can do today, and hopefully it won't be long until I can get rid of it. Still a tough track to start out again after that accident. Yeah, it is, but... Uh, yeah, if you can do good here, you know, it'll help us on down the road. Okay, Harry Gant's ready. And you can hear the flybys in the background as the cars are set down on the starting grid, and now drivers getting themselves strapped in and ready to roll off, and you still have time to order our coverage of the AC Sparkplug 500. If you see a telephone number displayed in the lower part of your screen, call that number to order our telecast of the race, and if not, you may contact your local cable company directly. Likely there's a phone number there with your cable bill or in the information you receive monthly. And dial them up and get on board with us. Settle back in your chair, cinch up your seatbelt, and get ready to go for our coverage of the AC Spark Plug 500 that we're just minutes away from the start. Perhaps the biggest story of all here at Pocono, as we mentioned, Bobby Allison, the Daytona 500 winner, the former Winston Cup champion, who is in a Pennsylvania hospital, 
The initial prognosis on his condition, perhaps not the best, but there has been tremendous improvement in his condition. Judy Allison, Bobby's wife, held a press conference this weekend, and we were there to listen in for you. Uh, Andretti was there Tuesday night, and he gave Bobby a real pep talk and told him that, you know, he knew he was a strong person and that he could overcome this, and he had to keep working at it and exercise. And Andretti no sooner left the room than he was doing this with his arms, you know, and doing his leg and everything, you know. So I would like Andretti to come back every day if he would. <laughs> Allison's condition continues to improve each day. He does have his open air cast on his left leg. He does have a neck brace still. The neck brace should come off in about two weeks. And uh, we're just making great strides all the time. Tuesday, they started him standing up with parallel bars. He was up to a stooped position. Wednesday, he was almost straight. And yesterday, he stood up straight. The doctors and the nurses there say that he's about six weeks ahead of the people that they normally see with extensive injuries that he has had. And uh, if the ones that know Bobby, they ought to understand this because this is his nature. He's always out there with extreme strides and always accomplishing great, great things, and he's still doing that right now. There's a chance that he could be back in a car before the end of this year. He is a fighter, and certainly if anybody would want to get back in a race car just as soon as is virtually possible, it would have to be Bobby Allison. Well, you're, you're definitely right, Mike. Uh, he is a very, very tough man. I've competed against Bobby for eight or ten years, and uh, he's always there, always fighting hard. His son, Davey Allison, is a rising star in the NASCAR circuit. Last year's Rookie of the Year, he's won a couple of races, and throughout this ordeal, he has been in the car every week, his own race car, competing. Pat Patterson is with him. Well, we talked a little bit with Davey yesterday, and you said uh, this didn't seem like it was going to be a lot of fun. Have you changed your attitude overnight? Well, we're still going to go out there and try as hard as we can. We were having some problems yesterday, but I'm hoping we got a handle on it now, and uh, we'll just go out and work hard all day. Three really different turns, Davey, and you got to do three different things with all of them to get around the racetrack. Is there anything you, you really concentrate, especially on the first of this race? Yeah, staying out of trouble, mostly. Uh, this, this place is a real difficult place to drive at, and uh, you got to go out and take care of your equipment, try to stay out of the fence, and then adjust the car as the race goes on. i got to believe, knowing how much progress your father's made in the last couple weeks makes a big difference mentally when you get back into the seat. It really does. Last night I had a real good visit with him, and uh, I was really pleased to see the progress that he had made. It had been about 17 days since I had seen him, and he had come a long ways by the time I got there. Well, Davey Allison is just about ready to get this one underway. As are the rest of the 42-car field. There's a look down the front straightaway at the starting grid. All the drivers are strapped in now and ready to go. The NASCAR season to date, 15 races complete, 14 to go. We're just past the midpoint. The Firecracker 400. Rusty Wallace heads up the point parade, taking that lead from Dale Earnhardt and with 2,272 points. He is the pace setter with an 87-point lead on Dale Earnhardt. Now, this race is worth 175 championship points to win, five points to each driver that leads a lap, and five more to the driver leads the, both, uh, the most laps. You see Bill Elliott in third, Terry Labonte fourth in the point, Ken Schrader is fifth, Phil Parsons the sixth place driver, then Jeff Bodine, Darrell Waltrip, Sterling Marlin, and Bobby Hillen round out the top 10. The point leader, and it's a tenuous point lead, though he picked up that $150,000 bonus from R.J. Reynolds and the Winston brand for leading at the halfway point. So Bob Heiss, his pocket is a little fuller right now as he comes to Pocono. That it is. That it is. And Rusty Wallace is here, all ready to go, as you said. And he's starting in the 11th position. Rusty, uh, in June, you had some problems, mainly gas, getting back around on this track, and you had the pit, right? Yeah, that was the biggest problem. I felt we had to race one with nine laps to go. We had like about a five car length lead over Jeff Bodine. And uh, I really thought that him and Mike Walter were going to have to pit. We didn't have a choice. We had a pit. And so we got ourselves in a situation where let's pit first. And when they pit, they'll be behind us and we'll win the race. Well, uh, we had a pit because there was no way we could have made it. And they made it to the last lap and they ran out to start finish line. And that they had just enough gas to get it done. And I did not finish third. Hopefully we got those problems corrected this time. We'll see how the car runs today. You think you can squeeze a little more mileage out of her this time? Well, I'll, just be, I'll think about it more. We've done a lot more work with the mileage program, seeing exactly how much, right to the ounce, how much is fuel cell will pick up in the back of this Kodiak Pontiac. 
and uh, I think we'll pink every inch of it up. It's just uh, if the cautions fly the right time for us. Starting 11th, it's going to take you a while to get up to the front, but I know you'll be charging up that way. Well, I've started this, really this is the highest I've ever started this darn old racetrack. I've started the 15th, 17th. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter where I start. Uh, last time I started 17th and was leading the race by the halfway point and led to the rest of the half of it. So I don't really care where I start. Obviously, you want to start up front as close as you can because there's a lot of traffic behind you. It's not as good as some of the cars up front. And the accidents do seem to occur about this point on back. So hopefully I'll stay out of it. Okay, Rusty, thank you very much. Now, let's go to Pat Patterson. Well, thank you. Darrell Walter waits on the pit road for the uh, s signal to fire the motors. And yesterday, you told me that you were pretty concerned about the tire thing, the fact that you're riding on something that you may have not spent that much time on. Well, we haven't, lot of, haven't had a lot of practice on the, the Hoosier tire. Uh, you know, it won the race here last time, and we did, in fact, end up racing on this tire here last time. So, uh, a lot of unknowns. The wear factor is a little different than it is on a good year. These tires wear a little quicker. Uh, they run uh, about like the Goodyear tires do. So I think it's just something else for us to worry about. You know, we worry about the motor and the handling and everything else, and then we, we strap on different tires. You're noted for one real important thing, and that is the fact that if you sit with a stopwatch and watch you come by every time, it's real, real close, especially short tracks. Can you, can you do this here, or does lap traffic really mess you up here as far as trying to keep that consistent times? A lot of that consistency comes with, with anticipation, uh, anticipating where you're going to catch someone to pass them. You obviously don't want to run into the back of somebody going across the tunnel turn. So a lot of times I'll ease out of the throttle on the straightaway a little to catch that guy after he's made that turn so I can catch him on that short shoot across there and make a clean pass. I think that's probably the difference in some of the veteran drivers and some of the less experienced drivers where they would run in there and maybe get themselves in a bad situation, the more veteran drivers will lay back a little and pass the car where it's safe. Good luck to you today, Darrell. Have a good race. Let's go over to Bob Heiss. And, uh, and I'm with uh, Bill Elliott, who's on the outside pole, uh, sitting next and ready to go on the front row here. Bill, you've had some success at this track. A couple of years ago, you won both races. Uh, you're looking forward to this one today. Well, so far, the car seems to be running pretty good. You know, we've had some good practice, practice laps, but still, you know, 200 laps here, a lot of things can happen. This track is a tough one to drive around because of this different corners. Any particular problems today? No, you know, it's no different than a road course or somewhere else where we run. And, you know, like I said, the thing of it is, you just got to be able to handle through all three corners or an average of, of whatever you want to do the best. Okay, what's, uh, what's in your mind right now just before you crank up this engine? Just feeling out what's going to happen and getting to the end. Okay, Bill, thank you very much. Good luck to you. And now back to Pat Patterson. Well, the man who sat on the pole here a couple of times uh, did not win the race, had an awfully good shootout with Dale Earnhardt a year ago today. Now, he's in the third qualified position, Alan Kowicki. And, Alan, in USA Today, they said the third spot is a place to be. <laughs> is that what you feel like today? Well, I hope so. You know, every time you win the pole, you're always very pleased to win the pole, and then they come up with some statistic that the guy that wins the pole never wins the race. Well, we didn't win a pole, uh, but we came close, and we ran really good. And... At this point, I'd really rather have a win, and if third place is the car that usually wins this race, that's where we want to be. Alan, this racetrack is uh, so different, but yet you're so good on it. What, what combinations make that happen? Well, you know, you've got to have a really good handling car here to get through these turns, and every turn here is a little bit different. It's really finding the best compromise because what makes your car handle best in one corner usually hurts it a little in another, so it's really getting your car to handle and having a good compromise between all three corners handling got to have a strong engine too well alan good luck to you today starting in the third spot this time maybe it'll be a payoff for him alan kowicki who nearly won this race one year ago was leading on the white flag lap dale earnhardt got up and under him and took the race away in turn number two of the final lap and uh, although kowicki harbors few ill feelings he thinks maybe this racetrack kind of owes him one and he'd sure love to get it back today a lot of people think he's got a strong shot here well i think he does mike uh, and you go back to that race with dale earnhardt uh, you know the lap before the end uh, earnhardt was leading the race kowicki got by him uh, they went down over the tunnel and allen slipped up just a few feet and it was enough room for dale earnhardt to kind of horse his way through there and, and hold him off to the checkered flag we could well see that kind of finish here again today we are coming up on what is the most exciting moment in all of motorsports and talked to a fellow yesterday who has been seeing this happen for the last 20 or so years. His name is Harold Kinder. He has his own fan club. 
He's the chief starter for the National Association of Stock Car Auto Racing. He's seen cars come past his starter stand on their wheels, on their roof, and on their side. But for a long, long time that he has done this, he's probably seen nothing more exciting in his entire life than when those cars fly past him. There's a look at Harold as he's lined up. And we talked to him yesterday as there's nothing like the start of the race. And Harold Kinder, the man with the flag, tells us why. Well, Mike, uh, I guess it's uh, of the 20 years that I've been flagging races that uh, that's one of the highlights of the racing career for me is when they come down to straightaway and I'm getting ready to pop the green flag on them, the adrenaline really flows. That's one of the greatest excitements of the whole race to me. of the top NASCAR Winston Cup drivers here at Pocono International Raceway competing in the 15th stop on the NASCAR Winston Cup circuit this year. A lot of excitement here at Pocono. The fans have been treated to an F-16 flyover, the Goodyear blimp on hand, to provide you with some unique pictures of this two-and-a-half-mile tri-oval. We'll have all the action for you. Morgan Shepard is on the pole. But right now, let's go up to our announcers, Mike Joy and Mr. Ron Bouchard. And a look at the starting field. There is Bill Elliott's Coors Ford Thunderbird on the left side of your screen on the outside pole and aligned right with him, Morgan Shepard, who will be driving the Raymont car for Bob Rahilly and Butch Mock, the Valvoline Pontiac, in relief of Neil Bonnet. Now, Bonnet was here at the racetrack. He's recovering from gallbladder surgery, and uh, he said he got a deal. They took his appendix at the same time when they went in. He's recovering, but he did practice in the car. The at least the two laps that NASCAR requires of each driver that'll compete here, and he did expect to run this race. Uh, however, when he got to the hotel Friday afternoon and found out that Morgan had put the car on the pole, Bonnet selflessly said, I'll forgo the points that all go to the driver who starts each car and let these guys have a good shot to win the race. That's what Morgan Shepard will try to do for that team today. Well, I think it was great of Neil to, you know, take that in, in, in his mind and, and put the car up there and just let uh, Morgan stay out there and not lose the lap changing drivers. Getting set for those most famous words in motorsport. Let's go to trackside. And a big roar from the crowd as the engines fire along pit road and covering the action down where a lot of it will be today. Pat Patterson and Bob Heiss. Here's Pat Patterson. Thank you, Mike. The engines are fired. It's going to be a super afternoon. The weather looks like it's going to cooperate. It's a blaze down here. Information, the big deal. Goodyear versus Hoosier. There are no Goodyears. That story is gone here at Pocono. And we're going to follow all the action this afternoon down in the pits. Working alongside will be Bob Heiss. Bob Heiss will join us along pit road as well as the engines come up to temperature. Cruz with the last check and tug at the window net that. and the belt to make sure that everybody is strapped in and set up, that radio communication is working with the drivers, and we'll have radio communication as well. Benny Parsons driving the Junie Donlevy car, and Rusty Wallace, the Winston Cup point leader, will be talking to us during caution flags, and also they'll be able, as we will, to answer your viewers' questions. We'll be putting an 800 number up on the screen a little later, and you can call in. If you want to know why Harry Hyde changed right side tires instead of left, or why Jeff Bodine is sitting in second spot and not pulling out to pass, or what the ruling in us on a certain instance, we'll try to get those answers for you. It's the first attempt at interactive television. You, the viewer, can become part of the event by getting your questions on the air and finding out as you sit home and watch this show just what's going on down there on the speedway. The field is rolling out, and we're looking at the king of stock car racing. Richard Cuddy, that wet rag in his mouth to get a little moisture from, and the STP Pontiac, a Jay Hedgecock built car prepared by Dale Inman and the crew at Level Cross, North Carolina. The right side of his windshield darkly shaded. Richard, of course, wearing his dark goggles in the car, and a look 
without that front windshield. Now, is that tough? To, did you ever drive a car with a windshield like that? Uh, not really, Mike. I've had some with the tent all the way across, but I think Richard's uh, thing here is at Daytona and Talladega, the tent has saved his windshield. It's one of the racetracks where you pick up a lot of rocks. At this racetrack, you have the same problem because everybody tries to run down as close to the grass as they can. And all this does is hold the windshield together in the race car. Now, more importantly, even on the street, instead of looking at the car directly in front of you, you'll look through that car's back window and windshield to find out what's going on up ahead of you. The same is true in racing. That dark windshield must make it tough on the drivers behind him. Well, it might hurt the driver behind him. Uh, you know, when you, you might have a wreck coming up ahead of you, there's a lot of times you look through that race car to see what might be going on in front of that race car that's dead ahead of you. On the pace lap. We're watching the field come past. They're in the long pond straightaway, some 3,000 feet. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for today's AC Delco 500. On the pole, Morgan Shepard, the Valvoline Pontiac, and Bill Elliott in the Coors Ford Thunderbird. In row number two, starting on the inside, there's Alan Kulwicki. He's in the Xerox Winter Ford, and Ken Schrader in the Folgers Exxon Chevrolet. Going fifth, last month's winner here, the Levi Garrett Exxon Chevy for Jeff Bodine. Mark Martin from Arkansas in the Strolite Ford Thunderbird. Row number four, good qualifying run for Jeff's younger brother, Brett Bodine, in the Bud Moore Crisco Motorcraft Ford. And Sterling Marlin, who's come so close to a win this year, the Piedmont Airlines Oldsmobile prepared by Jake Elder. In row number five, Dale Earnhardt, the Winston Cup champion in the GM Goodrich Chevrolet. And Daryl Waltrip, winner at Charlotte in the Tide Exxon Chevy. In row six is the point leader, Rusty Wallace, in the Kodiak Mobile Pontiac, and Davey Allison in his Haviland Star Thunderbird. Row number seven, the Kodak Films Oldsmobile for Rick Wilson, and the Digman Racing Pontiac, that's New York State's Greg Sack. In the eighth row is the STP Pontiac of Richard Petty, and Lake Speed in the Wins Kmart Oldsmobile. Row number nine, Terry Labonte, who had to qualify on the second day in his Budweiser Chevrolet. And with him in row nine, Mike Alexander, who is substituting for Bobby Allison in the Miller Buick. In row 10, it'll be Derek Cope, and he's lined up with Kyle Petty. They're both in Ford Thunderbirds. Back in row 11, Dale Jarrett in an Oldsmobile and Rodney Combs in a Buick. In the 12th row, Harry Gant returns to Winston Cup Racing. And Mike Waltrip, who was second here last month. Row 13 has Ricky Rudd's Buick, along with the Buick of Bobby Hillen Jr. from Texas. Eddie Bearswell, he's in an Oldsmobile, and so is Joe Rutman. In row 15, Phil Parsons, the Talladega winner in an Olds. Ron Junger brother, rookie Ken Bouchard. In the 16th row, we'll be talking to Benny Parsons today. He's in a Ford and veteran Buddy Baker in an Oldsmobile. Dave Marcus in the 17th row in his Chevrolet, and rookie Ernie Irvin in a Chevy as well. Bob Shack comes off the Arca circuit, and Jimmy Horton, the dirt track driver from New Jersey. In the 19th row, rookie Brad Nofsinger, he's in a Buick, and veteran Jimmy Means Pontiac. Mike Potter from Tennessee has a Chevrolet, and so does local driver Bobby Gerhardt in the 20th row. The Oldsmobile safety car leading them around, and our 800 number will be up on the screen so you can call in and ask your questions as the day goes on and be part of our program. Here's the number, 1-800-Viewer-5. We'll pass your questions along down along the pit line or wherever necessary. Try to get you the answer for what's going on today as we look out the windshield and see what Richard Petty will see as he comes down that long pond straightaway to the tunnel turn, turn number two. By the way, this is a free call. And call now if you wish or jot down the number later on in the race if there's something you want to know. This is a television first. We'll be happy to try to find the answers for you here today. On the short straightaway, coming out of turn number two, 75, Morgan Shepard. He's the pole sitter. It's his second bush pole position of 1988. And alongside Bill Elliott. Now, Elliott has been the fastest qualifier twice already this year. Thought he might have the pole for this race today. I'll head for the flat turn number three. Crowd is all on their feet. They won't get much sitting time today. The action is constant here at the Pocono International Raceway. Two and a half miles around, and we're getting set for the drop of the green flag. You see how flat turn number three coming out of the front straightaway is. The speedway shaped much like a tri-cornered hat. Shepard, Elliott on the front row. Engines beginning to come to full song, and green is out. We're racing. Joe Rutman, 
Bill Parsons out of line, and dipping low is Mark Martin. They'll stay two by two into the first corner. Well, Mike, you can see how wide the front straightaway is there. At one point, we had four race cars side by side, and I think we're going to see this type of racing all day long with the competitive feel that we have here today. Shepard, the pole sitter, has the lead. Bill Elliott is second, Alan Fulwicki is third. The blue car is Mark Martin trying to move up on the inside, and tucked in tight with him are Sterling Marlin and Darrell Waltrip. There's a look at the front of the pack, seven cars in a tight wrap up and over the tunnel turn. Shepard has a low line off turn number two, and Elliott's right in his tire tracks. Uh, he's, he's hanging right on to Morgan right now. I think everybody is basically feeling out the racetrack. Uh, we had the rain last night, and everybody wants to see what the racetrack is going to do. Morgan Shepard looks like he will lead the first lap of the 500 here at Pocono. 200 laps to make up the race, and Shepard is on the point as they come past the start finish strike. pit lane also Bob Shack as the field heads into turn number one Shepard in the lead Elliott is second and Mark Martin has muscled his way up to third yeah, Mark has been running good in this Ford uh, you know we watched him practice yesterday and he seemed to be one of the stronger cars uh, it seems like Brad Nuffsinger has got a penalty for maybe jumping out of line at the start of the race could be stop and go penalty he was in his pits for only a second He'll pick up the tail end of the field without losing a lap here. Bob Shack as well made a quick appearance on pit road, and he's gone. Over the tunnel turn, one of 200 laps complete. Elliott has a look inside, gets a little free air to the beak of that Thunderbird as he trails Morgan Shepard into three. And they run just as low as they can get on that long, flat turn. Well, Mike, that seems to be the fastest way around that racetrack. And if, if you watch during the race, we'll see everybody, the slipperier the racetrack gets, the lower they'll try to run in the corner. back in to take that high line dipping in to turn number one the most steeply banked turn on this circuit 18 degrees and there's Elliott tucked right up under Shepard to make a run at him it looks like Bill's going to try him down the short straightaway before the tunnel it's the place if you can get under you can make the pass a roar of approval from this packed grandstand at Pocono Pennsylvania as the Coors Ford Thunderbird of Bill Elliott takes the lead Elliott in 1985 set a single season earnings record for all of motorsport when he won the Winston Million and most of the super speedway races on the tour. Yes, Mark Brown looks like he's trying to get on the Morgan the same way that Bill Elliott has, but he got pinched out a little bit. And if we look there, it looks like Morgan's car might be pushing a little bit, and he's drifting up off the corner, and you see how it let Mark Martin get down under him. Martin taking track position, and here comes Cole Wicke on the right side of your screen. Alan Cole Wicke, the third place qualifier, takes the three wide down to the first corner and zips up and slams the door. Uh, Kowicki had a, a, an instance there where you had Mark Martin and Morgan Shepard get side by side. That slowed both race cars down, and Kowicki got in the draft and, and would manage to pass both of them very easily. Here's Waltrip ducking out of line. Darrell moving on Sterling Marlin, that is. Nothing there that time. Check that. That is Jeff Bodine moving on Marlin. Waltrip a bit further back, dicing Rusty Wall the point we'll take a look back in the field here is Daryl Waltrip he's just made the pass then on Rusty Wallace Wallace started 11th and Waltrip 10th so they've been battling back and forth I think probably now Daryl's car might have been a little faster and him and Rusty both will work together and, and try to get up front to hook up with the leaders as they come off the corner that battle is for seventh position Waltrip leading Rusty Wallace and Wallace seeing the leaders stretch them out just a bit trying to maintain that track draft to the front pack. We can see Dale Earnhardt breaking into the pitcher and trying to hook up with Rusty Wallace in, in uh, Darrell Waltrip because right now they have about a 20-car lead, uh, the leaders over these cars, so they're going to try to run them down. A look at Earnhardt, the man in black, the defending Winston Cup champion. Left side of your screen is Waltrip, Wallace, the meat in that sandwich, and then Earnhardt. The race now for second as they go up and over the tunnel turn. Mark Martin takes the second spot away from Kowicki. He's strong at that tunnel. He, he is. Uh, yesterday, we watched Mark practice, and his car seemed to be working well in the corner and very strong down the straightaway. To turn number three, the flat corner that leads onto this 3,700-foot front straightaway. And it's a tight battle behind race leader Bill Elliott. Elliott all alone at the front. Alan Kowicki with Morgan Shepard, third and fourth place car. 
behind them, Sterling Marlin, Jeff Bodine, Rusty Wallace has repassed Darrell Waltrip, then it's Dale Earnhardt, Richard Petty, and Rick Wilson to the tail end of the top ten. A look out the front of the FTP Pontiac with Richard Petty way low on the racetrack and facing that 3,000 foot straightaway to turn number two. Yes, Richard runs very low. His race car in this last race uh, about a month ago, he was probably one of the better cars in the turns. Alan Kulwicki gives up the third spot. Morgan Shepard will take it back. Two leaders in these opening laps. Morgan Shepard, the first circuit, and Bill Elliott went out in front. Bob Shack, the Arkin driver, back on pit road. And we watch Sterling Marlin try to hold off Jeff Bodine. This would be to break into the top five, and Wallace is there. He has caught that pack, and he gets under Bodine. Yeah, Jeff slipped up a little bit. He got upside of Sterling there, and the racetrack is still very slippery, and, and he managed to move him out just a little bit, and Rusty uh, made a pass on Jeff. This is the kind of action you'll see all afternoon without commercial interruption. Battle at the front of the pack here. Morgan Shepard out ahead of Alan Kulwicki and Sterling Marlin, and now Bodine has a mirror full of Darrell Walker. Rusty Wallace has passed Bodine while Bodine was working on Sterling Marlin. I think it's a little bit early in the race yet, Mike. I think everybody is basically trying to settle in, feel their cars out. I think after the first pit stop, then we'll see probably what everybody has, other than Bill Elliott. He has managed to move away from the field and seems to be uh, very strong like he usually is at Pokemon. Sixth place car, Rusty Wallace, 27. Here's your race leader. And Bill Elliott has opened up a sizable advantage on Mark Martin, the second place car. Look at the interval as Elliott comes past. Long look down the front straightaway from our turn one camera. Mark Martin, good separation back to third place, Morgan Shepard. Alan Colwicki remains the fourth place car. In fifth was Sterling Marlin and sixth, Rusty Wallace. First to second place. And just Elliott continues to try to check out. Now here is Rusty Wallace, and he'll try to make that move on Sterling Marlin's Oldsmobile. Rusty looks very strong. He's been moving himself up one at a time. But we can notice he's uh, left Darrell behind him, and now he's trying to work on Sterling to get that spot. Marlin started eighth. Wallace started in the 11th position, and they both gained a lot of spots here. Sterling Marlin, car number 44, perhaps the best crew chief in the business, Jake Elder. Well, I think you're right, Mike. Uh, I had Jake when, when he was a crew chief on the Race Hill Farm Race team when I drove for him, and uh, bar none, I think he was the best I ever had. He did an excellent job, and Jake is one of the guys that can figure what the racetrack is going to do, adjust the race car to it. Marlin, though, gives up the spot to Rusty Wallace, so Wallace moves to fifth, right behind the number seven Ford of Alan Colwicki. Marlin, seven, is Darrell Walter. And Richard Petty has moved up to eight. Richard started back in 15. Richard has moved up through the field, and uh, as we see when he was on just a minute ago, that he was able to run right on the bottom of the racetrack. And if his race car will stay like that, Richard will be tough today. These are the cars he may be catching momentarily. Alan Colwicki, the fourth place car. Number seven, Rusty Wallace in the fifth spot. Wallace, who started 10th. Now running in fifth behind Kulwicki, who started on the second row. Ford versus Pontiac. Wallace dipping low, but Kulwicki, is, he's going to have to go to the grass to get him on the inside. Uh, Rusty's going to have to put two in the grass and, and get by, but he's getting under Allen, and he has him now. Uh, Rusty's working very well, and uh, he's going to move to the front of the field. In the front straightaway. Now look, Kulwicki has the engine. Looks like he's going to pull Rusty Wallace. So what he also has Sterling Marlin in a tight draft. Nope, can't do it. Can't yeah. get back. Rusty, Rusty had the position going into one, and uh, he made the pass. Nine laps complete of 200 will run here today. Here's Richard Petty, the eighth place car. He's at the tail end of that pack. Look at the gear shift lever, the brake adjuster. That's that dial on the dashboard, a little bit of the padding. And you saw on the right side of the dash that hurry back Bobby sticker. And that, of course, for Bobby Allison. Racing from fourth on back, left side of your screen, Rusty Wallace, then Alan Kulwicki, then Sterling Marlin, and Richard Petty has moved up a notch. He's now the seventh place car. Behind him is Darrell Waltrip. Waltrip, that bright orange and white car, that Dayglow colored machine. The Tide Ride, and Jeff Bodine is still with that pack. He is Waltrip Hendrick Motorsports stablemate. View from the pack grandstand, and even our cameraman has to stand up to see. 
not surprising. The racing has been that good. I don't think anybody sat down. Uh, it's a very competitive racetrack, Mike, and uh, all day long you'll see races all through the field. Uh, not everybody will, will be running for the lead, but uh, everybody in the field will be racing as hard as they can, and there's plenty of room on this racetrack to do just that. At sixth position, Richard Petty moves up alongside. That is Sterling Marlin he's racing with. Now, Marlin, probably not too concerned. He's gained a few spots. Now he's losing a few, dropping back perhaps trying to see what the car has, and I'm sure, ooh, Richard, a little loose there, uh, coming off the tunnel turn, had to toss and catch it. Well, Richard uh, never minds a loose race car. I've seen him many times drive him sideways, and you know, Richard's car looks very well now. Sterling seems to be a little bit, a little bit of a push in the turns. As you can see, he runs up off the bottom of the racetrack, but I'm sure Jake Elder can make an adjustment on the first stop and, and get him back up there. Little action in the back of the pack. They pass beneath the flag standards. Waltrip dipping out a line. Two cars behind him trying to carry that tow down into turn number one. Darrell way tucked down on the inside. Darrell tried to make a move on Sterling on the inside, but uh, Sterling was able to shut the door on him. Average speed of 10 laps, 153 miles an hour around this two and a half mile super speedway. Sterling Marlin in 44, Darrell Waltrip in 17, and Waltrip is not going to give it up. And he just flies past Sterling. That's a good place to lift out of the throttle if you're on the outside. Yeah, Sterling knew that he didn't want to go over the tunnel turn on the outside of Darrell. Uh, as slippery as the racetrack is right now, the outside with no rubber or hasn't been run on a lot of dirt. He, he was smart to get on the brake and get behind him. It's too early in a race to race that hard. Race leader Bill Elliott coming fast. He continues to extend his advantage over Mark Martin in the Strohs Ford. Morgan Shepard. Driving the Babylon Pontiac, then there's the Kodiak Pontiac of Rusty Wallace, the Xerox Ford of Alan Kulwicki, the fifth place car. 12 of 200 laps complete. They're running up near 160 miles an hour, and here is Dale Jarrett, his dad, a two-time Grand National Champion. And Dale coming into the attention of the crew, this team owned by Cale Yarborough, who there drives in some of the races, and Jarrett in the majority. They have really swapped off uh, where Kale runs about 10 races and Dale will run the rest of them. And it seems like they have a serious problem here, Mike. They've got the hood open and, and they're looking at something. Tough break for Dale Jarrett. We're back with the leader. And Jarrett's car continues to sit on pit road. And Dale Jarrett may become the first retiree from this event. It seems like Mark Martin has stayed at about the same interval uh, as, as it has been for the last five laps. And, uh, Morgan Shepard has stayed about the same. They have seemed to move away from the field just a little bit. But look at this battle behind them. Rusty Wallace moves over on Colwicky to hold on to this fourth spot. Richard Petty is sixth. Waltrip is the seventh place car. Blake Speed has now moved up in the top ten. He's moved up to eight. That kicks Darrell Walter, or kicks rather Sterling Marlin back to ninth. And now Ken Schrader is the tenth place car. So the race we're watching at fourth position now with Wallace. Kulwicki and Richard Petty. You folks that are waiting for the first commercial break to go to the refrigerator for a cold one, <laughs> you can go now because there are no commercial breaks in our flag to flag coverage of the AC Spark Plug 500 coming to you live from Pocono, Pennsylvania, and we have caution coming out on the speedway. So the leaders will come around and race to the flag as we're under the first caution of the day here at lap number 13, and everybody is dashing on to pit road. Bill Elliott, the race leader, Mark Martin, Morgan Shepard, the entire top 15 are in the pits. Bill Elliott getting service from brothers Ernie, Dan, and the rest of the Coors crew. Boy, here, talk about a traffic jam. How'd you like to be caught in this one? Mike, believe it or not, everybody has gone down pit road. I don't believe I've seen a race car go by yet to the caution flag. Not even Dave Marcus, who usually <laughs> tries to stay out on the first caution and lead a lap for those five wins to cut bonus points. Good stop for Elliott, and like most of the teams up and down the pit lane, they will change all four tires. Why? Well, I think this is the opportunity, Mike. On a caution, you like to change four tires because you can keep the stagger right between the front and the rear of the race car. This was an opportunity to get in, change all four tires, and maybe make a chassis adjustment. A look at the Wood Brothers, Leonard Wood. 20 years changing that front tire on Kyle Petty's car, and he tries to get out, and he's a little bit he's a little bit blocked in. Kyle got jammed up in the pits there. Everybody got so close together, he couldn't swing out and, and get into line. He had to back up. He lost a few spots there. Balance of the pit.
field coming off the pit lane, and there are tires lined up all up and down pit road. Everyone got four fresh ones. Now, some of these teams have been running the majority of the season on the Goodyear tires. Today, everyone is on Hoosiers, and that's Greg Sachs' car, the Long Island driver racing for a Florida team that is having an extended stay along pit road, and finally, he's away. Look up at the top sections of the grandstand of the VIP suites, and look who's out pit road first. Pole sitter Morgan Shepard. Richard Petty is second. Alan Kowicki is third. Fourth is Bill Elliott. And fifth, and a team that's really pumped up for this race, Mike Waltrip. Yeah, Mike had a very good run in the first race here, and I'm sure that he feels this racetrack might owe him one. Uh, hopefully, he can stay up front all day in the Country Time Pontiac. So he, the second-place car, here a month ago, Mike Waltrip, Way up there among the leaders, that's that bright yellow car and the Country Time Lemonade Pontiac. A look in the Elliott pit as Dan Elliott makes some notes on the result of that pit stop. And Davey Allison comes to pit road with one lap to go before we go back to green. Here is Bill Elliott in line just there ahead of Mike Waltrip's Pontiac. So Elliott went into the pits first and came out fourth. Now, Davey Allison is back on pit road, and they're putting right side tires again. So, perhaps on that, nope, going all the way around, that's Robert Yates, the team manager with the Jack. Uh, Davey probably felt he had a tire out of balance or maybe an equalized tire. Uh, this was the time to come back in, put four more on, and make sure they feel right. So, getting set with one lap to go before we go back under the green flag. And Davey Allison will rejoin the field without losing anything but track position. The field still slow up in turn number two. Jimmy Means makes the second stop and then he will rejoin the pack. And there you see the race leaders set and ready to go. Morgan Shepard in a Pontiac. Richard Petty's Pontiac, the Ford of Alan Kowicki. Bill Elliott came in the pits first, came out fourth. Mark Martin came on pit road second. He was the seventh guy out. And there's Morgan Shepard, third guy in. First guy out, so that's an attaboy to Bob Rahilly, Butch Mock, and the Raymock Valvoline crew. Very true, Mike. Uh, you can see here, and, and a lot of times on a pit stop like that, if they've lost two or three spots, they might have, might have had to go into the car to make an adjustment, turn a jack bolt to change some wedge to, to make the race car feel different for the driver, and, and that's probably what happened in the first three spots there. Debris in turn number one off one of the race cars was the reason for this first caution of the day. It comes out on lap number 13, and it'll be a four-lap caution. It puts Morgan Shepard back in front in a race that has seen only two leaders thus far. Shepard the pole sitter and Bill Elliott in the four. Harold Kinder puts the field back under green and the land rushes. Oh my God! Twelve cars wide. They come down the front straightaway. Mark Martin appeared to miss a shift and that looks like Ken Schrader on the right side of the screen. And it's Rusty Wallace. Smoke pouring from the back of the Kodiak Pontiac. And the Winston Cup point leader may see his 80-point margin go away. Tire smoke or otherwise? I believe it looks like engine smoke, Mike, the way it's coming off the back of the race car. Uh, hopefully it's nothing serious. He's going to try to get back into the pit here now. So Wallace down on the apron inside of the racetrack. What a blow to the man who hopes to win his first Winston Cup national driving title this year. At the front of the pack, the big roar from the crowd as Bill Elliott gets shuffled back by Jeff Bodine. Ken Schrader in car number 25 was on the right of your screen during that jam session on the start, and did he make a move? He did. He dropped to the bottom of the racetrack, and he must have passed 15 cars coming along here for the green flag. Richard Petty up front, and uh, the crowd roars its approval as the man who's won 200 times on this circuit and led a good part of the race, now at the front of the pack, second place in the race behind Morgan Shepard. Ken Schrader tries him on the inside, and that'll dust Richard back to third. Uh, it looks like Richard's going to move back a couple of spots there. He got up off the bottom of the racetrack, and, and two of them, Jeff Bodine and Ken Schrader, have got by, and now Bill Elliott pulling up on the inside, too. So the pack shuffles down the back straightaway. Richard Petty up front, being pushed back to fourth spot, and he will get credit for leading that lap. He had overtaken Morgan Shepard. So now it is Schrader's turn at the point, the Daytona 500 pole sitter. And coming up at him, your old nemesis, Jeff Bodine. <laughs> Bodine has moved, made a move to the inside and has gone right by Schrader. I say nemesis, Bouchard <laughs> Bodine spent a lot of years on the open wheel NASCAR modified circuit, trading paint and wheel marks and uh, tire marks and victories. And second place finishes up and down the modified circuit. 
So Bodine, who considers Pocono one of his two home tracks, the other being Watkins Glen, New York, now has his stablemate Ken Schrader on the inside, and Elliott trying to poke the nose of that Thunderbird in. Uh, Schrader drafted by Jeff again, and as you see there, as they were coming down to Schrader, uh, Jeff tried to squeeze him off a little bit, but Schrader held it in there and has made the pass, I believe, here. Schrader looking for the lead. Look at the pile up behind him. Elliott, Petty, Daryl Waltrip there. the tunnel. Elliott glued there. Bodine at car number five. Petty in 43. Waltrip in 17. That's your front five. In that draft, there are perhaps a dozen cars. Terry Labonte has moved up to six. And, and Rusty Wallace, the point leader, has taken his Kodiak Pontiac all the way to the garage area. Let's check with Bob Height. We're with Rusty Wallace in the garage area. He came Barry Dotson, the crew chief, tells me they have transmission problems, and they're working feverishly under the car, as you can see. They're probably going to have to pull it and see if they can get a new gear in there. What a blow to Wallace's championship hopes, as his 87-point margin can certainly disappear today, even if he gets back on the track and finishes this race. Well, it's definitely going to hurt him, Mike, and it's funny. We talked to Rusty yesterday, and, and he commented, and uh, maybe it was a, a bad home, but... Uh, he commented how that Pontiac has never broke down yet this year. In uh, this race here, he's had a transmission problem. Tough break for Rusty Wallace. We rejoin the front of the field. Ken Schrader getting passed by Bill Elliott. And here comes Bodine. Elliott opened the door, and Jeff is going to try to put his foot right in it. Bill has pried Ken to the outside of the racetrack, and here comes Bodine. He's got the bottom, and he's going to get by him, too. So Jeff Bodine, the winner here last month, and Bill Elliott. 49 has got shoveled back to about fifth or sixth spot, and it was just a matter in traffic being in the wrong place at the wrong time. We had a look at Rusty Wallace's car. Let's talk to the man that went into this race, leading the Winston Cup point standings with Bob Heiss. Rusty is out of the car right now. Rusty, are you going to stay out, or are you going to be able to get back in? No, we're going back in. We broke a transmission on a race start. Morgan Shepard was starting to feel real from a dead seal and uh, from a dead stop, and that's hard for hard in cars when you got to stop dead and take off real quick. And I had it in second gear, and I just picked the throttle up, and it just broke the transmission out from underneath it. So, uh, you know, we had a little problem with the transmission earlier in the week, and we put a new shifter on it, and that seemed to cure the problem. But I guess it might have been internal. Uh, the boys can put another transmission, and right now we're going to go out there and run hard and try to get as many points as we can right now. Okay, Rusty's going to try to get back in it. Well, they're racing here at Pocono. They're racing as if every lap was the last one. Bill Elliott at the front of the field. And the challenge well back as Richard Petty loses a couple of spots behind Terry Labonte and Jeff Bodine. The restart after the lap 13 caution, it came as they completed 16 laps. And it was tremendous. We'll look at it again in a moment. But meanwhile, Bill Elliott having a little trouble lapping Mike Potter's car. That's a section of the turn where it's very tough to get up on the outside. And uh, the lap car did stay to the bottom. And, and I think Bill was just being cautious getting around. Finish his lead. Let's take a look again at that restart as we completed lap number 16. And this is what has put Kenny Schrader racing up with the leaders. There's the green flag. Kulwicki immediately dump, dumps out a line in the seven car, and Wallace misses that ship. You see all the smoke, and they go 12 wide across, trying to miss Wallace, who is square in the middle of your picture. 
Still on the far right is that maroon car number 25 of Schrader, and he comes all the way up into the front pack. Yes, Ken made a good move on that. Uh, you know, he was right on the ball when he seen Rusty hesitate and have a problem. He jumped to the bottom of the racetrack, picked up a lot of position. At the front of the field once again, Elliott, the race leader. Kenny Schrader is in second. Looks like Walter Bear in the third position. In fourth, Jeff Bodine. Running fifth, Terry Labonte. And sixth now, Richard Petty. Now, Richard has had a very good run. And uh, I noticed before when Richard come down the straightaway here, he seems to have some rubber marks on the right-hand side of his race car. He led a good bit of this race here uh, last month. Didn't mind mixing it up with him. And he got racing with a bunch of cars, found himself out of the groove and into the wall up in that tunnel turn. And it took him out of the race. But he was extremely competitive and led a good portion of this event at the midpoint. Walter moving up on Ken Schrader. Average speed of 20 laps, slowed dramatically by the caution, 137 miles per hour. Bill Elliott comes across. And today, for the first time at Pocono, we have with us the Goodyear Blimp America, based out of Houston, Texas. Mark Kynette from Spring, Texas, is the pilot, and Glenn Hampton is the man giving us these pictures. We'll follow Elliott around as he leads this race winds his way around out of that steeply banked turn. Turn number one and heads up the back straightaway, the long pond straightaway, looking for turn number two. Now there's a look at this unique tri-cornered racetrack. Turn number two over the tunnel, where Elliott is, and we'll follow him. There's the tunnel for access to the infield. Elliott now into the short straightaway as he leads Ken Schrader and Darrell Waltrip. Turn number three, very long and very flat. Where Elliott is right now, and see a long way to get around that turn number three before they head back for this front straightaway. You could land a good-sized jet here with uh, with room to spare. You definitely have enough room for a runway up front here, Mike. Single file this time, pass. Unlike the restart, everybody trying to catch a draft and get down that straightaway and into turn number one. Leader Ken Schrader and Darrell Walter, Jeff Bodine and Terry Labonte, all in Chevrolet, following that Ford of Bill Elliott. Well, the phones have been lighting up on our 800 number. Questions coming in, and certainly we invite your questions and comments here on our viewers' choice flag to flag coverage of the AC Spark Plug 500. Here's Pat Scanlon. We've got one of our viewers has already called in that 1-800-VIEWER-5 number, Al Palumbo, and he wants to know, will limiter plates be a factor in today's race? Ron, what do you think about that? Uh, right now, uh, it seems like the weather is going to hold. I think, I think what Al's looking for is, is the restrictor plates that are put under the carburetor. That's how I interpret the question. And those are not used here, only in Daytona and Talladega. Even though this Speedway has a long front straightaway, I believe there's only two racetracks, Mike, and that's Daytona and Talladega, where they run the restrictor plate because of the high speeds. And at this racetrack here, the speeds are nowhere near as fast, probably 30 to 40 miles an hour off. So here they are able to run a large carburetor or whatever NASCAR does allow. That restrictor plate, the place underneath the carburetor to restrict the airflow to the engine, designed to slow the cars at the nation's two fastest speedways where they had an occasional tendency when a car got sideways to lift off the racetrack. That does not appear to be a problem here at Pocono or at the smaller speedway, so uh, that facet of NASCAR racing, it'll apply next week in the Talladega 500, but only at Daytona and Talladega. So no restrictor plates. These engines putting out some 600 to 630 horsepower in these Winston Cup cars, uh, depending on whose dyno you measure that horsepower on, and cross the engine builder's figures are when he gives you that figure. <laughs> this is true, Mike. It seems like everybody has a, a different idea on horsepower. And here is Jimmy Bean wagging the tail as he comes off the corner and a lot of smoke from the Eureka Vacuum Cleaner's Alka-Seltzer Pontiac. And Means will coast off the circuit uh, rather than go to the garage area. Uh, tough break for Jimmy Means and it seems like the caution has come out, Mike. Apparently Means' car has dropped some fluid on the racetrack so at lap 28 will be our first lap of this second caution period of the day jimmy means what looked like a blown engine or transmission or rear right up over that tunnel turn and that is a tricky spot on the racetrack so we'll check in with the race leaders pit let's go to bill elliott's pits 
me. I'm just going to talk. Bill Elliott coming down the pit lane, coming to the attention this of Ernie, nice. Dan, and the crew. See what to do to that Coors board. This time in, in Bill Elliott's pit. I think there's been some concern, Mike, that the tires that they put on in that last caution uh, were not quite right because they were shuffling around even before this caution came out. Now, you see Ernie and Dan and the guys working on the right and left side as they changed all four of these Hoosier tires. And again, I think the strategy may be to run as hard as you can. So Elliott's in and out in a very good stop before tire change. Let's go down to, uh, to Bob Heiss. Okay, we're in the Folgers pit of the Ken Schrader's crew, and they made a very fast pit stop. Changed a couple of tires and were out very quickly. He had nobody blocking him, and he's in second place, and he got out of the pits very, for, uh, very fast. Two things that have become apparent on pit stops under the caution. First, it's a good chance for the teams that go in up front to have a good clean pit stop and get out first. But second, and maybe more importantly, is being able to pass cars, getting out of the pits and move up. It sure looks a lot easier if you can get a quick stop than it is to try to pass some of these cars out on the racetrack at speed. Well, Mike, this is why I think when you see a pit stop, as we've seen here in the last two cautions, everybody, all of the leaders have dove into the pit to be the first one in and the first one out. Because like you said, it's definitely easy, easier to pass them on pit, pit road than it is on the racetrack. If you're charting laps at home, we have 28 complete out of the 200 that make up the AC Spark Plug 500 this afternoon to Pocono International Raceway. You're looking at Bill Elliott and this huge crowd that's come here to see the event. Ricky Rudd will lead the field around under caution, so the Quaker State Buick will go up on the leaderboard for the first time today, and he'll be the fifth different leader of this race. Terry Labonte, Eddie Beerswale, Jimmy Horton, the dirt driver. Brad Notzinger, the former California Sprint Car champ on pit road, so is Mike Potter. And under caution, it is Rudd, Jeff Bodine in second, Schrader is third, and fourth is Dale Earnhardt. And Jimmy Mean gets a shove along through the infield from a track wrecker and a tough and a short day for the Eureka Pontiac. Mean's perhaps the most underrated driver on this tour in the minds of many. You're right, Mike. Uh, he probably works harder than anybody, uh, has, has less money than a lot of the teams out Here's a look coming up on our summer event card for 1988, the IBF middleweight championship. Frank Tate against Michael, second to none. And you'll see that live July 28th, right here on your viewer's choice, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Tate boxes out of Houston, Texas. He began his career at Detroit's famous Croc Gym, home of Tommy the Hitman Hearns. He's an Olympic gold medalist, won the IBF title October 10th, 1987 against uh, Michael Olajide, and he'll be up against Frank Tate, boxing out of, or rather not out of North Hollywood, California. Both boxers are undefeated. So mark the date down, July 28th. It will be live. you see it here on Viewer's Choice. Hope you'll be with us for that one as part of our summer of sports, racing, boxing, and wrestling on your Viewer's Choice. Let's go down to Bob Heiss. He's on pit road, and we'll talk tires. Harry Hyde, Harry Hyde, Ken Schrader's crew chief, is with me right now. And Harry, you were checking those tires awfully closely a few minutes ago. Are they running hot today? Bob, they're not running hot, but there's a tremendous amount of wear on them. The first time we pitted was 14 laps, and uh, we were a little over half gone, so it was going to run real close to run a full pit stop of about 32 to 35 laps. So we're changing tires pretty quick now because uh, we're hoping the tire wear will get better as soon as uh, the, the, the track gets a little slicker. Right now it's real tight because of all the rain. Is that why the decision most teams went to change four tires uh, on that first caution? Yeah, because they knew the wire was going to be pretty tough, and uh, now it looks like it got a little better on the second stop. That is Harry Hyde, the veteran team manager for Ken Schrader. He's the man who brought Tim Richmond to start him behind the wheel of this Folger Chevrolet. Benny Parsons drove it last year. Dennis Connor, the crew chief, Hyde, the team manager. And behind the safety car, there is that Folgers car. He's in second place behind Jeff Bodine of the Levi Garrett Chevrolet. With more on tires, Pat Patterson. Well, Mike, we noticed on this last stop that uh, the 75 car, the 9 car, took on four tires. Jeff Bodine, however, didn't take on any tires. But I think there's a, there is a lot of concern, and everybody in the tire business, and each one of these teams has a specialist, is right now paying a lot of attention to the wear they're getting. 
Now remember, each driver took on four tires on the first caution flag of the day. So perhaps on this stop, the strategy from Waddell Wilson, Bodine's crew chief, don't get tires, but as we were just talking about, Ron, get that car back on the racetrack and get track position. Well, this is right, Mike. If you pit, you get up to the back of the pack again and you have problems getting up through the traffic. Uh, Jeff has decided the tires might feel good on his race car right now, and he's going to stay out there and take a gamble on gas that will get another caution. Look at the VIPs, and here's some of the fans on hand for this AC Spark Plug 500. At Pocono, Pennsylvania, 30 laps are complete. Average speed slowed to 133 miles an hour by the two caution flags. The first on lap 13, debris in the back straightaway. And this second caution for an apparent blown engine by Jimmy Means happening on lap 28. Rusty Wallace, after replacing that tr transmission, comes back on the garage area. We'll get an update from scoring on how many laps he has lost replacing that transmission but Ron quick change and the two caution flags certainly have helped him that was a very quick change on a transmission but uh, as you know Barry and the Kodiak crew they do an excellent job and I'm sure that uh, at least 15 of them are under there putting another transmission in that Pontiac standings under the caution Jeff Bodine Kenny Schrader Dale Earnhardt veterans all and any young fellow you know well brother Ken Bouchard and Daryl Waltrip in fifth Kenny running in fourth and he's, he's had good outings at this racetrack his first visit here not a happy one no, the first time he ran this racetrack, Mike, it's very difficult qualifying. You get out there, they change the race car a little bit, and you're trying to make it go as fast as you can. And Kenny went over the tunnel, lost the back end, and, and bounced it into the wall. So that was a, a, a very bad situation. But uh, since then, he's come back, and, and he's really run very good today here. Well, again, a look at the pit stop summary. And again, Bill Elliott coming into the pits first, but coming out a little further back in the pack one more lap that's the sign from harold kinder we'll go back to green here's pat patterson well mike as i told you every t every team has a, a tire specialist mike thomas is the specialist here for bill elliott were you happy with the temperatures and what were they on the right and left we're pretty satisfied with them right now the right side is running about 250 260 and the left side is 230 we just mainly changed tires keep an eye on them get them cooled back off and get a little rubber on the racetrack see how the car is going to work then well, you know, we talked a little bit about rain and the fact that we've got a lot of humidity in the air. How much difference does that make in, in, in the tire temperatures we're seeing right now with this cloud cover? Well, the rain cleaned the track off and made it real green, and it makes it pretty rough on the tires to start with. But now with the cloud cover, it really doesn't make any difference. It keeps the track cooler. It may help some. So the temperatures you got at this point are not that big of a concern? No, no concern at all. Okay, so that's a story from Bill Elliott's pit. A look from the Goodyear blimp, America, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company floating overhead here at Pocono International Raceway, and the cloud cover is lifting. So that blimp can get a little more altitude, give us a good overview. There's a huge infield crowd here at Pocono, and a look at this unique racetrack. Don't forget our toll-free number where you can call in and ask your questions if you want to know why Jeff and I didn't get those tires or anything about today's AC Spark Plug 500. This is interactive television. And give us a call. We'll get your question on the air and find an answer for you. You're looking from the long pond straightaway across the infield at turn number three, that long flat corner that the cars wind through. They are single file, but for the cars that are a lap or more down. Just one car there to the inside. Everyone else on the lead lap as we come back to speed. You're watching from the Goodyear blimp. Green flag is out. That's Dale Jarrett down to the inside. As the field thunders pass from that first restart we saw and one car well out in front of the pack through turn number one and a bit of shuffling going on behind them and what a view from the blimp a whole different perspective now the blimp really shows you mike just how wide this racetrack is and it's incredible it, it, you can't use all of the lanes in the corner but it's a very very wide racetrack here's that second pack trailing race leader jeff bodine in amongst the laps car dale jarrett kenny schrader Right now, the second place car, Dale Earnhardt, up there among that race leader. Now, here's the second straightaway. Coming to turn number three. That long, flat corner. You see just how much time the cars spend in that corner. Only now do they start to drift out toward the outside wall and the front straightaway. Jeff Bodine leads them across. Ken Schrader is second. Darrell Walter third. Mark Martin is fourth. Kyle Petty is up to fifth. In the sixth spot is Bill Elliott. Davey Allison, a complete shuffling around of the order, but for those front two cars. 
Well, Jeff was able to get a good jump on a restart, Mike, and, and he's out there probably 10 or 15 car lengths, and he has a very comfortable lead right now. In the garage area, Bob Shack, Jimmy Means, and also trouble on the Eddie Beerswell car. Jimmy Means will join them there out of the race. Bill Elliott battling Kyle Petty in four, running in the top 10. That's the race for fifth position. Elliott overtaking Kyle on that lap. 33 laps down out of 200 as the two Fords go at it. Kyle Petty, whose dad, Richard, of course, seven-time national champion. Don't forget his grandfather, Lee Petty, won two national titles before hanging up his helmet. Jeff Bodine, native of Shimon, New York, former standout in the NASCAR Modified Division, worked his way up to Bush Grand Nationals and now wins the Cup. Mark Martin. Or rather, that's Lake Speed, that purple car on the right side of your screen, has been scrapping up into the top ten. It seems like everybody's basically fallen in line, Mike, and uh, to shuffle things out. Uh, we have a few cars driving or trying to drive up to the front of the pack. From second, there is Ken Schrader, car number 25, Chevrolet. Darrell Waltrip in third, and here, moving against the last car of Dale Jarrett, Dale Earnhardt in number three, Rick Wilson in number four, and Richard Petty. We talked to Dale yesterday, Mike, and uh, he made the statement that he was going to try to lead as much of this race as he could. He thought his car was fast, and he said he was going to come out here today and, and show us just what he could do. Uh, he hasn't made it to the front yet, but uh, I wouldn't count him out. Earnhardt, winner of the last two wins the Cup Championship, trying to move up. He is in the top ten, but barely. At this point, Rick Wilson and Richard Petty trailing him. Darrell Walter closing up on Schrader's bumper. Could have a battle for second coming up here. We have three of the Rick Hendrick Chevrolets out front here, Mike. Bodine, Ken Trader, and uh, Darrell Waltrip battling it out for position. And trying to be the spoiler, Mark Martin in that dark blue Ford, number six, and Bill Elliott in the Ford, number nine. Second through fifth position. Running in a tight pack over the tunnel, turn number two, and into the short straightaway. And that's going to be a bigger pack shortly. Kyle Petty trying to move up. He's broken free of race traffic. Dale Earnhardt behind Kyle, then Richard Petty, Rick Wilson, Lake Speed, and Davey Allison. Mark Martin trying the high side this time. Runs kind of out of room there to make a bid on Walter. Second through fifth. As they come down the front stretch, here goes Darrell. Uh, Darrell's going to try to draft by uh, Schrader on the inside. But he's not going to make it. Schrader closed the door on him. And, uh, you know, basically they've uh, probably decided Darrell might be a little faster here and maybe he can help run down the leader. The leader is Jeff Bodine in the Levi Garrett Exxon Chevrolet. Schrader in second, Walter in third. All three cars owned by Charlotte, North Carolina auto dealer Rick Hendrick. All three Chevrolets and behind them the two Fords. Mark Martin and Bill Elliott, they're the fourth and fifth place cars, and they have broken away from the rest of the field. Kyle Petty trying to run them down, but he's no closer than he was a lap ago. Looking back at turn number three to Kyle Petty's car, here's the front five coming off turn number three. And there you see Kyle Petty just into view barely, the sixth place car. Coming past on lap 37 of the AC Sparkplug 500. Fourth place, Mark Martin, and fifth place, Bill Elliott, right with them. Leader, Jeff Bodine, disappears off the left side of your screen. And the race for second. They've settled down somewhat. I think they have, Mike. And, and it's, again, uh, very early in the race, 37 laps, uh, you know, of a 200-lap race. So nobody's really going to look at, you know, how, how fast do I have to run to lead this thing? I think if they can stay together, keep everybody in sight, uh, I think most of the drivers are happy. Jeff Hammond on the stopwatch. Watching his driver, Darrell Waltrip, circulate. He times every lap, calls them out to his driver on the two-way radio so Waltrip knows, aside from how far he is behind the car ahead, just how his car is running every lap. I think that's a big help, Mike, at a racetrack like this here. When they do give you times, because there's a lot, of, a lot of room on this racetrack, and you can try some different lanes, and when the crew chief gets back to you and tells you that lap there might have been quicker than the last one, whatever you did, run that way. It can be a 
big help to a driver because it's very hard to feel three or four or five tenths in a race car. One driver is moving is Bill Elliott. He's passed Mark Martin. That's a change at fourth position. Elliott's number nine. Now up in the fourth spot. But it seems those two Chevrolets have hooked up and they're doing a duet trying to move away from the board. Yeah, but it looks like Bill Elliott right now is uh, catching Darrell. And uh, I think right now Darrell seems to be strong enough to just hang with Strato, but not quick enough to get by him. And, and as we can see, Bill Elliott is closing every lap. Elliott is there as they come through turn number three and back to the front straightaway. Bodine, the yellow car, out in front. Schrader, Waltrip, and Elliott, they have now left Mark Martin, the fifth place car. Richard Petty has now moved up into the sixth position, displacing his son, Kyle. Nothing there for Darrell as he tried to get under Schrader. You know, these race cars might be owned by the same man, but you never know when you see him dice it out on a racetrack. Uh, they race each other just like another competitor, and I'm sure that's the way Rick Hendrick wants it. Junior Johnson had a two-car team for several years, both prepared out of the same shop. Found that situation perhaps not quite to his liking. He now has a single car uh, set up, whereas Rick Hendrick, each of his three race cars have a separate shop, an entire separate team, and they run independently of one another. Let's go to pit road and Pat Patterson. Well, Mike Joy, we're in the Hoosier pit area where they put, mount all the tires for the cars. Interesting, on this particular race, there were six sets of tires issued to each Winston Cup team. That means that the only way you're going to get any more tires, if the tire wear is bad, is because, is simply because there are no more tires. Therefore, whatever you've got out there right now are the ones you're going to have unless somebody falls out of the race and you can collect those tires from them. So a tire story can certainly develop here. So one of the races within the race will be teams running to get the tires from cars that drop out. Bill Elliott going after Kenny Schrader, trying to do what Darrell Waltrip was unable to, and Elliott put Schrader away. Waltrip has moved past, so Waltrip now the second place car. Elliott in third, Schrader is fourth, Mark Martin becomes the fifth place car. Richard Petty has moved up to sixth. Kyle Petty now in seventh. See what Elliott can do with Waltrip as they come off turn number three to the front straightaway. Bodine, the leader. Waltrip, Elliott, then Schrader, and here's Richard Petty. Richard moving back up. Richard got shuffled back on that pit stop, Mike, and uh, he's had to pass some cars to get back to where he is, but uh, he's done a good job running them down here. With Petty, the new seventh place car, Lake Speed, who won his first career race in Darlington, South Carolina, this spring. Here's Elliott, tucked up underneath Waltrip. Looks like he's trying to put the final rinse on the Tide machine, but he's got company. Battling back on the inside is Schrader, and at the tunnel. Schrader on the inside. Boy, Elliott hauls it in there. That, that was a brave move, but uh, Elliott was able to jump back by Schrader. I sure, I'm sure he let him uh, slide back in there. And uh, right now, he's trying to hook up with Darrell. I think if he gets by Darrell, he looks like he has a fast race car right now, Bill Elliott. Certainly does. And that move from the outside in turn number two, we may see that one later today. Elliott up underneath Darrell Walter as they come past the front straightaway. Carling separating them. Schrader and Mark Martin. Then Richard Petty and Lake Speed. Our toll-free 800 number in operation if you have a question. Bob Heiss has one on pit road. Yes, I do. One of the viewers from Florida, Clinton Ayers, is asking whether the new T-Bird body style is making any difference at this spectacular track. And to answer that for me is Dan Elliott of the Coors team. Dan, does that new T-Bird style have any difference on this track over past years? Yeah, it really does. But, you know, the basic Thunderbird as it is today has been around since this body style, since 83. And then a change in 87 and then the air dams in 88. Each year gets improvements over another, even though the body styles are like the 87 is exactly the same as the 88. And the air dam just made it a little bit different. But it gives you time to work on the car just a little bit more and a little bit more. And you go back and you make changes, small changes that you didn't think would work, but, but add up being a big improvement. So the longer you run a body style, the better they are. Thus, when, they, when we start running the 89 next year, they're a completely different car, and it'll be, we'll just have to start over from square one. 
square one may be a bigger square because the 89 Thunderbird is much slicker looking than the 88 version. It has the traditional, now traditional, T-Bird beak. The rest of the car reminiscent of the BMW 635 high-performance coupe. And uh, certainly it'll be a slick one in the wind tunnel. We'll see how it does on the racetrack. Here's a look at the leader, Jeff Bodine, and the separation he's opened up on that second pack. Daryl Walter, Bill Elliott, and the cars trailing, Ken Schrader and Mark Martin. Rusty Wallace back on the racetrack, but Ron, he's got some ground to make up. He does. Uh, unbelievably, he's only down 14 laps, and, uh, you know, he can run all day. He can still make up some points here with the cars that do drop out during this 500-mile race. That is a fast transmission change of a little bit of smoke from Sterling Marlin's car. That's that Piedmont Airlines Oldsmobile. Here's a look at it. Marlin, who has come extremely close to winning no less than three races on the circuit in the first half of the season. Billy Hagen, the car owner. Jake Elder, the crew chief. Dewey Livingood builds the engine. And Marlin a little bit back off the pace right now. We'll see how he rolls. Oh, there's a bit of that smoke, and it looks like it could be coming out that left exhaust pipe. Yeah, it's a possibility that Sterling is having some engine trouble. Uh, the last three or four races, they have had some uh, some different things happen to their engines. Broken crankshafts, broken camshafts, and uh, they, they had some problems there. They thought they had them fixed for this race here, but as we see, uh, Sterling has a little smoke coming out. When he lifts off the gas, you get a little puff of smoke. Uh, it could go like that all day long. Well, let's find out. Let's go to Sterling Marlin's pit. Mike, we talked to Jake Elder, the crew chief, as you guys commented earlier. Jake, one of the veteran crew chiefs here. They don't know. They're just watching it right now. They see the smoke coming out of the rear end, and Ron Bouchard can attest to the fact that no matter how sophisticated these machines become, there's times when you just don't know what's wrong. They're waiting to see. Jake Elder is perhaps, well, he's not most famous, but he is famous for the briefest interview on record in NASCAR racing. Terry Labonte was driving the car. He worked on it in Martinsville, Virginia, some six or seven years ago. And the car, big plume of smoke as it coasted into turn three, and twice brand national champion Ned Jarrett asked Jake, he says, what happened? Jake says, load up. Load up. Then turned around, walked away. <laughs> there is Sterling Marlin continuing to run laps here as they try to diagnose the problem, see if it's something they can fix. Here's a look at the front of the field. Elliott has just taken second spot on the right side of your screen. Jeff Bodine, the race leader. Many times Bodine has come here and led large portions of this race. He's only gone home with the trophy once. Jeff won. He has always had a very good combination on this racetrack, Mike, and a very strong race car. And he's been very unfortunate to, to get into a situation, either with gas or tires, that might put him out of the race. And right now we have the top five. Jeff Bodine, Bill Elliott, number nine, Darrell Waltrip in the third position, Kent Schrader and Mark Martin rounding out the top five. Bodine, the race leader. Bill Elliott, though, is closing in. There's Schrader on the inside, tucking up behind Darrell Walton. This is the race for third. Schrader is fourth. Mark Martin is fifth. The Batesville, Arkansas driver. Rookie Ernie Irvin comes to the pit lane as we watch the battle. Up toward the front of the pack, third position. Jeff Bodine, the race leader. Bill Elliott now second. We're watching third, fourth, and fifth. Brad Nossinger, another rookie, also on pit road. That leaves only Ken Bouchard as a rookie on the racetrack at the moment. Schrader tucked right up under Waltrip. Now, Waltrip went by him with ease. Seemingly the faster car. That may have changed. Well, it looks like now that he's been able to draft right up to Darrell and hang on to him. And as we can see, we have Darrell, Schrader, Mark Martin, and Richard Petty, who has run all three of these guys down and has pulled up on Mark Martin's bumper. Waltrip getting shuffled high, and here comes Mark Martin on the inside. Morgan Shepard, the pole sitter, has made a pit stop as well under the green flag in the Babylon car. Richard Petty trying to move up. He gets under Mark Martin and takes the spot as they head for the tunnel turn. Morgan Shepard on pit road, as we mentioned, making a stop under the green, and this could be a costly one for Morgan. Well, it looks like Morgan changed right side tires, and I don't know if he had a tire problem or not, but uh, he's back up to speed, and... A uh, very good possibility he is not going to lose a lap here. He'll stay on the lead lap as Mike Potter comes to the pits with a flat tire. Here's the race leader, Jeff Bodine, but he's been caught. Bill Elliott is right with him. And that tour is forward showing the strength that it had early on in this race. We've had five different leaders. Shepard, the pole sitter, Elliott, Bodine, and Richard Petty. And Ricky Rudd has led a lap under caution here. Not quite 
been so good getting off that tunnel turn at Bodine. Well, I think we talked to some of the drivers uh, yesterday, Mike, and, and they all had a little different idea of which turn they like to run through. And maybe that's not the turn that Bill Elliott is set up for. We can watch him here over the tunnel. Let's see if he gains any ground on Jeff Bodine. If not, maybe turn three is his, is his turn. But there's somewhere on a racetrack where he is running the five car down. Bill Elliott trailing Jeff Bodine. You saw Bodine open up the advantage in turn number one. Now here in turn three, Elliott is catching him. But Morgan Shepard is making a second pit stop. Pat Patterson is there. We just talked with Butch Mock, uh, one of the owners of the car. The uh, right side tires were awfully hot when they pulled them off, Mike, and now they're going to change the left ones because, again, they were very hot. And you can see where this tire is blistered right here. Take a look at the tires. Butch Mock pushes it away there. The tire has blistered badly. That was rear and uh, Ron is that Ron Bouchard is that uh, on this racetrack is that something we can look for well Pat it's a possibility it, it could be something wrong with the chassis in that race car if not uh, Morgan's car seemed to be running well uh, maybe we can look more for uh, blistered tires on some of these other race cars which I hope not we are getting more pit stops Bill Parsons and Harry Gant both the skull cars are on pit road under the green no such problem for our race leaders Bodine and Bill Elliott Bill Parsons got right side tires. Harry Gant will take on all four. Is it a gamble? When you make a stop under green and you have a tire problem, you aren't sure which tire it is, do you want to take two and gamble for the shorter stop, or do you want to go in and get all four and only stop the one time? Well, I think, Mike, if you can be sure that you can pick out the tire that is the problem on a race car, it's always better come in, get the two tires, and you know you have the tire that might be the problem. If you're not sure, it's always better to take on four because you lose more time trying to stop, get in the pits, reject the car. So at that situation there, Morgan didn't know which tire he had a problem with. He probably thought it was the right rear and it was the left rear. So he had to make a second pit stop, very costly stop for Morgan Shepard. And that puts him a little further back. Watching Bill Elliott chase Jeff Bodine. Bodine picked up his first Pocono win in front of a whole lot of his hometown fans and folks that he grew up with here uh, one month ago in the first of the two annual races here at Pocono International Raceway. So Bodine leading this race now. I asked him yesterday, will that win last month? What does it do for you coming into this race here today? It's a confidence builder. You know, you know you can win. It's like when we go to Daytona. I know I can win there if everything goes right. Uh, we know we can win here at Pocono if everything falls into place. <laughs> but that win was a few weeks ago. This race today is going to be a lot different. I, I, I really predict, and I've been saying this all weekend, that it's going to be much, much tougher for anyone to win today. It, it's, I think it's going to come right down to the end, that last lap, the last corner. Well, if the racing we've been seeing so far is any indication, he'll be right. You're watching Viewer Choice live, flag to flag coverage of the AC Sparklet 500. No commercial interruption. We'll stay with the action here all day long, and it has been a hot one in these first 51 laps. At 50 laps, Jeff Bodine, the race leader. Bill Elliott, second. In third, Ken Schrader. Fourth is Darrell Waltrip. Fifth, Richard Petty. Sixth is Mark Martin. Seventh is Blake Speed. Eighth, Kyle Petty. Ninth is Dale Earnhardt. Alan Pulwicki is running in the tenth spot. Eleventh is Rick Wilson. Twelfth, Davey Allison. Brett Bodine is thirteenth. Morgan Shepard. 14th before his pit stop, 15th Sterling Marlin, 16th is Mike Waltrip, Bobby Hillen is 17th, Terry Labonte's back in 18th spot, 19th is Ricky Rudd, and 20th, Benny Parsons. The way they're running here at 52 laps complete, Dale Jarrett making a pit stop. He is the fourth car to make a stop under green in the last five laps. Morgan Shepard, Harry Gant, Phil Parsons, and now Dale Jarrett stopping under the green. We're watching the leaders circulate this two-and-a-half-mile trioval in the Pocono Mountains. Jeff Bodine and Bill Elliott. Richard Petty on the move, and he takes Darrell Waltrip for fourth spot. Right with him is Mark Martin, who could not follow Richard Petty through. Richard has done an awful lot of passing on the tunnel turn here today. So, Petty, here's Waltrip coming right back with him. Der in the last race, Mike, it seemed like Richard was very strong over the tunnel, and that's where he got into the trouble when he spun and hit the wall over there. But it's a place in the racetrack where his race car works very, very well. Battle for the lead. Elliott coming along underneath the Jeff Bodine automobile, and there Bill Elliott goes back to the lead. Bodine coming up 
trying to take it back, and he is not going to get it. Elliott is. He is strong. They might have been a little contact there. Just a little bump here goes Bodine. This is the situation we talked about, where one car is faster on one part of the racetrack, and the other car has a decided advantage at the other end of the speedway. So Bodine goes back to front. Ken Bouchard along the pit lane under the green. He becomes the fifth car to stop and take tires under the green. It's, it seems like, Mike, that Bill Elliott is very, very strong to turn three here. It's where he's able to catch Bodine and try to put a pass on him. The other two turns on a racetrack, it seems like Jeff Bodine is stronger there. So it should be an interesting race to see who can get the lead and uh, maybe not have a tire problem. You're watching Viewer's Choice. We're here at Pocono, Pennsylvania, the AC Sparks Look 500. Live flag to flag coverage. No commercial interruptions. You see the whole race just like you're sitting here in the grandstand. And what a battle it's been. As now, Brett Bodine becomes the sixth car to come on pit road for tires. Our pit reporters will update that story for us in a moment. A look at Bodine, 39-year-old driver from Chamon, New York. NASCAR go-kart. Started in go-karts at age five on a racetrack that his father owned, and here's Bill Elliott, who grew up with his brothers racing cast-off cars from his dad's Ford dealership in a field out behind their house. They paint on them the numbers of their favorite drivers and go out and pretend they were Fireball Roberts and Joe Weatherly and Curtis Turner. It seems like everybody, Mike, has had a different way in starting in racing. Uh, mine began in a go-kart and then moved into race cars, it seems like, immediately after that. And it seems like if you've talked to every driver out there, they've either started on the street, in a go-kart, or at a racetrack. Jeff Bodine leading Bill Elliott by the slimmest of margin. 55 laps are now complete. Let's take a look and summarize this race so far for you. At 50 laps, Bodine has led 22 of the 50 circuits. Average speed down because of the two caution flags for seven laps, 133 miles an hour. Eight lead changes among five drivers despite the competition so far and a lot of action battling back behind them. Bob Schacht is in the garage area, so is Jimmy Mean and the Texas driver, Eddie Beerswell. You're looking from the Goodyear Blip America as they battle through the corner and heading back for the front straightaway. This is that wide flat turn number three. Where, where Elliott seems to have a little advantage on Bodine. Yeah, it seems like through that turn there, Mike, that uh, Bodine's car moves up the racetrack just a little bit, and Elliott is able to run down on the bottom. So right now, he seems to be happy to ride in Jeff's draft, and I'm sure they've seen some of the tires that have come off these race cars, and I'm sure... Well, this is a look that you won't get from your grandstand seats. The Goodyear Blimp America, Mark Kynett, the pilot, and Glenn Hampton providing us the pictures. The Blimp courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company as Jeff Bodine holds off Bill Elliott's Ford Thunderbird. Back behind the race leaders, Ken Schrader, the third place car, Richard Petty is fourth, and now Darrell Waltrip in the fifth position. Mark Martin is sixth, Lake Speed is seventh, eighth is Kyle Petty, and ninth is Dale Earnhardt. Not seen much of Earnhardt today. But here is Waltrip and the Mark Martin automobile, the Strohs Ford, and they're racing for fifth spot. Martin trying to come up on the high side. Lake Speed in the Oldsmobile, right there with him. Little wag of the tail from Mark Martin's car. Got a little loose coming off that third corner. Lake Speed on the inside with Waltrip. And Lake Speed drafts on past Mark Martin. Just followed Waltrip right up through. So uh, Lake Speed, following Walter, gets a good tow from the draft here at Pocono. Waltrip, eclipsing a Bobby Allison mark, now with his 375th consecutive start. They now run 29 or 30 races a season. Richard Petty, the holder of the number one start. Mark, and up front it's going to be Elliott again. Bill Elliott passing Jeff Bodine for the lead. Puts Elliott in front. Bodine has led just about half of the 57 laps so far. And Bill Elliott takes the lead for the third time today. Ninth lead change of the race. Pocono has long rivaled Talladega for the most lead changes in a NASCAR event. And those lead changes are only measured at the start-finish line. So it is Waltrip from Bodine. 
Schrader in third, Richard Petty fourth. Now Darrell Waltrip holding the fifth spot with Lake Speed, the new sixth place car. Mark Martin drops to seventh. Kyle Petty, Dale Earnhardt, and Buddy Baker makes his first appearance of the day in the top ten. Three cars battling now for that fifth spot. Waltrip had it. He gets shuffled all the way back to seventh. And Lake Speed in the Oldsmobile comes up to be the new fifth place car. Waltrip doesn't want to stand for that, but it is Martin going to the inside. Takes the draft on by as they go down the short chute and into turn three. Mark Martin, the former ASA speed champion, ran in his rookie season back in the early 80s. Spent two years on the NASCAR circuit, went back to the short track, and was tapped for 1988 to drive the new team out of Livonia, Michigan. Jack Roush and a team with heavy Ford factory backing and the Strobier sponsorship. Steve Emile, the team manager, Robin Pemberton, the crew chief, both veterans of NASCAR racing, and Roush, who's made his mark in IMSA and Trans Am events, among others, in his first year on the NASCAR circuit. Seems like, seems like all of the Fords here, Mike, have been very strong. Uh, we have Mark Martin running up front. Uh, we have Kyle Petty, who has caught Darrell Waltrip. And it seems like the Fords have always been pretty strong on this racetrack. It's their type of racetrack. It's a handling racetrack. Benny Parsons in the pit lane, the Jimmy Donlevy bullseye Ford. Tough break for the former Winston Cup champ and Daytona 500 winner. Now here's Lake Speed with Mark Martin. Speed in the 83 car. The winner at Darlington in the Trans South 500. And right behind them, Darrell Walter and Kyle Petty now has caught that group of cars. Now Lake Speed was one of the drivers we talked to yesterday, Mike, that uh, seemed to feel that he had a very good shot at running good today. And as we can see, he's been very competitive. And I think one of the things that helped, uh, Lake Speed has been on the Hoosier tires all year long. So it helps the, the teams that have been running more of that type of tire so they know what they're going to do. They know how to size it. Speed, along with Morgan Shepard, Buddy Baker, uh, have run the Hoosier tire most of the events this season. So is Sterling Marlin. So that experience that Darrell Walter told us at the top of the show may be an advantage for those cars that have raced more often on the Hoosiers and can perhaps better figure how those tires are going to hold up and work through the day. Close call there. Yeah, well, that was over the tunnel bump again, Mike. Uh, you know, one of the places in the racetrack where you have a bump, uh, racetrack gets a little slippery, very easy to lose the race car in there. These cars battling up tight and up close and uh, close in as we come back to the front straightaway here. Single file, but for Darrell Walter, who is out of line, now trying to tuck back in behind Lake Speed. And there's Benny Parsons back on track, a lap down after making his pit stop. He falls in behind Kyle Petty. Earnhardt beginning to catch that pack now. Earnhardt has been back and forth all day long, and, uh, you know, I'm sure they're working on that thing is in, in trying to get the chassis right for him. Uh, we haven't seen the end of him yet. Usually uh, the Childress crew will work on that thing and get it adjusted, and uh, Dale will somehow keep it in there all day long. Here's a look at Earnhardt. We had a viewer question on the tire pressures used in Winston Cup Racing here on the Super Speedways. Uh, they measure and check these tires at 45 pounds per square inch. That comes from Ed White out of Mustang, Oklahoma. They test the tires uh, at 60 pounds per square inch, but they're generally raced in the 45-pound range here on the Super Speedway. Dale Earnhardt bouncing. Uh, got a little bit of dirt down there. Yes, it seems like Dale's car is loose. Uh, matter of fact, he's in the pits right or coming down pit lane for a pit stop right now. So under green, Earnhardt becomes the eighth car to come to the pit lane under green. Pat Patterson is in his pit. Mr. Childress's Goodrich crew goes to work on the right side, Mike, and they'll pull those tires off and change them out. They don't have another set of tires up on the wall, so it appears it's going to be a two-tire change. We're going to try to get a look at the tires as soon as uh, Earnhardt pulls away. We're looking now right at the tire. We don't see any, uh, uh, as far as blistering goes, we don't see any blistering on the tire, so therefore probably just Earnhardt making a fresh tire change. This, then, would be the first of the scheduled pit stops. Earnhardt went 85 miles, 34 laps on that tank of fuel before coming in. And that, uh, that's a little shy. I would have expected he'd stay out a little longer, but here now, Mike Alexander and Derek Cooper on pit road. Well, this was probably a situation, Mike, where Dale felt that the car was not driving good, and, and to make the stop a little earlier, sometimes you can get fresh tires on and adjust. And now we have the Miller Buick of Bobby Allison's in the pit. Mike Alexander behind the wheel. He's the permanent relief driver for Allison until Bobby is set to come back. 
Richard Petty, and I uh, can't hardly read the number for the tire marks on that door. Richard, Richard has had a few scuffles, it seems like, coming up through the pack. On the right side, tires for Richard Petty. And we're having a bit of a technical difficulty with our in-car camera. We're going to try to get that back up and running for you as we've been getting some good pictures early on in this event from the, through the windshield on that STP Pontiac. So Petty is in now at lap 63, as was Mike Alexander. Joe Rutman making his stop this time by, and we're in green flag pit stops, and the order will really shuffle. Now, should we look to see among the leaders, drivers coming in not by themselves, but perhaps when Elliott comes in, the second place car pitting as well? Well, I think on that uh, last caution, Mike, uh, Jeff Bodine did not pit. Now, he's been out there longer than all of these cars here, and Elliott did pit, so that should uh, change maybe some of the complexion of the race. Kenny Schrader on pit road, Dennis Connor and the crew, that's Dennis, the crew chief, changing the right rear. And you see the adjustment at the rear window of the car. That's where the stacking bolt is for the left rear. It right, looked like Harry Hyde put a, one or two rounds of wedge in the car. That means that the Folgers Chevrolet was too loose, and Schrader needs it just a little bit tighter to get around a racetrack better. So Schrader with fresh tires on the right side. He pits that lap number 64 of the 200 will run here today. We continue under the green. Green flag pit stop. Bill Elliott still on the circuit, but the Coors crew is ready to go to work. The tires are up on the wall. Elliott may take it one more time around the park before he comes to the pit lane. But Ernie Elliott and crew ready for the race leader. Now with Schrader having pitted, that will move, of course, Jeff Bodine, the second place car. Mark Martin, the third place car, now in the pits, along with Kyle Petty. So Elliott staying out. He pitted on that second caution, so he can go a little farther. Yeah, it would seem like that he would be able to run another eight or ten laps, but, uh, you know, there's always the possibility that he might have a problem, and uh, we should see this time if he, if he ducks in the pits. Ernie standing in the pit lane, Mike Walker and Bobby Hillen coming to pit road. Here is Elliott moving through the corner, down the short straightaway, leading to turn number three. Tires up on the wall. The NASCAR inspector has moved over in the vicinity of the Elliott pit. That's usually a sign they'll be in next time. Take a look at the race leader. No, he drives right by, Mike. <laughs> so the tires on the wall, that's, that's a ruse that a crew chief will sometimes use. Oh, yeah, we're coming in next lap. <laughs> Trying to fool everybody up and down the pit lane and then leave his driver out. So Elliott continues to circulate. Alan Hudding uh, of Andier, Pennsylvania, watching, tuned in late, called our 800 number, wondering why we're not seeing Rusty Wallace. Wallace had a transmission failure on the lap 16 restart. Spent 14 laps in the garage area getting it changed. Wallace is back out on the track, but he is running 14 laps behind. And it seems like Sterling Marlin is still having the smoking problem, but still running. He's just making a pit stop now. So is Davey Allison and Ricky Rudd. If you have a question for any of the crew chiefs on pit road, or for our commentators and want to know what's happening in this race or what a team might do differently, here's our viewer hotline, 1-800-VIEWER-5. Call in your question and we'll get an answer for you. When is Bill Elliott going to pit? Let's answer that one right now. Here's the Coors Ford. Coming down to the attention of Ernie Elliott and the crew. And Jeff Bodine followed him right down pit road. Here's All right, line. Elliott into the pits right now. Dan Elliott told me they're going to change only the right side. They're not going to put on four tires. I don't see any wedge going in at all. So it's apparently just the gas and the tires on this particular stop for Elliott. And there he goes. He's ready. Fast pit stop for the Elliott team. Here's Pat Patterson in the Bodine pit. And Jeff Bodine just came in changing two the right side tires, Mike, and he was waving his hand trying to get away, so he did not have as good a stop as he would have liked to have had, but he is down and away. Pat, what do the tires look like that have just come off Jeff Bodine's car? Well, they didn't look bad, Mike. I'm really looking for blisters, and I'm not seeing any. I'm over here looking at one of the tires now, and Jeff Bodine's father-in-law pushes one away, and uh, it, it looks pretty good. In fact, it looks better than most of the tires we've seen and, and having some other stops in between. Okay, if you can, try to get back to us with some of these tire temperatures, as that's always a key indication on how the tires are running and how the chassis uh, is set up. And Ron, for a crew chief, having that 
thermometer and the pyrometer there to look at those tires as they come off the car instead of just putting your hand on them to see if they're hot. Now, that could be a, a real help to a crew chief. Well, oh, it's a major help, Mike. It, it gives you a guideline or an idea where you might have a problem in the chassis of this race car. I'm sure if you looked at the tire that come off of Morgan Shepard's car, the left rear, that that tire was definitely hotter than the rest. And this is something that they use to tell them where they have a problem. Darrell Waltrip in the pit lane, Jeff Hammond complete on the right front. You see the tires are already changed and they're waiting for the gas man to finish his job before Waltrip can go back out. Now Buddy Baker coming around turn number three and coasting along here. Wonder if Baker has run himself out again. Well, there's a possibility, Mike. Uh, you know, it was very close from the last stop to here how far they could go and it seems like Baker is moving very slow. Either he has trouble or he is out of gas. Tough break for the Red Baron Pizza Oldsmobile of Buddy Baker. He is coasting around turn number three. And at Pocono, if you run out of gas going across the start finish line, it is nearly impossible to coast two and a half miles. Baker is going to make it around. And there's a big a look at the man they call the Gentle Giant from Charlotte, North Carolina. And there's a guy I can put down some lobster. <laughs> Baker is a good eater and, and a heck of a guy. And he's just barely going to make it down pit road. I'm sure he's probably run out of gas. And, and that's a shame because Baker was really running good. He was hanging in the top 10 or 12. He'll go at least a lap down having to close in and perhaps two. As the crew goes under the hood, they may have to uh, squirt a little ether in that carburetor to get him restarted if he's out of gas. Back up with the race leaders. As they come past, Bill Elliott. Back to the front of the pack, Ken Schrader, Mark Martin, Richard Petty. The fourth place car. Six, Darrell Waltrip. 69 laps completed now after these green flag pit stops. And there is Elliott, the race leader. Bodine were running pretty close together before they made their pit stops and they came in on the same lap. They were on the racetrack, Mike, one and two, and, and now we see that the five car has moved to third and Elliott has really gained some distance on the racetrack. Uh, as we see Bill come by here, he's pretty near a straightaway ahead of Bodine. Bodine having a little bit longer pit stop than they were uh, a little bit away is getting him back out on the racetrack. We watched Bill Elliott circulate. You can see where your favorite driver was running. And the lead that Elliott now has opened up. Ken Schrader posted in the second spot. As we take a look back through the field. You're watching Viewer's Choice and live flag to flag coverage of the AC Spark Plug 500. No commercial interruption. But you'll be with the action all day long just as if you were here. Bill Parsons in the pit lane. Now, Bill stopped under green at lap 49, and here he is back in at lap 70. Bodine moving up on Schrader. This race will be for second spot, and Bodine went past like Schrader was stopped. Yeah, Schrader uh, hasn't been running all that well, and uh, Bodine has slid right by him on the bottom. Nine lead changes in this event among five drivers. Morgan Shepard, Bill Elliott, Jeff Bodine, Richard Petty, and Ricky Rudd each led this race. Two caution flags. Debris on the back stretch at lap 13 and Jimmy Means, a blown engine at lap number 28. Buddy Baker losing at least a lap on that pit stop and Pat Patterson has the story. Joey Knuckles, the crew chief here. Joey, pushing that car down the pit road is not what you want to do. He came in with the engine shut down. Tell me what happened. Well, on about the 14th lap of the race, we uh, got all the way up there to 11th spot and they called in and said it's missing real bad. So we were just Riding around trying to get some points, and evidently what's happened is making the car use a bunch more gas than it should. So we run out of gas, but we made it back in and worked on the car and all. Just want to finish this thing. What has Baker said about the tires as far as what kind of wear you're getting, and, and, and what are you doing to prepare for what may happen later on in this race? Well, our tire wear is extremely well, but you know, then again, we're running two seconds off the pace. I'm seeing some problems going down pit road with the front running cars. I think Hoosier had a real good tire here. Okay, that's Joey Knuckles. Rick Bender calling in, wanting to know how many laps these cars will run on a green flag stop. Mike, basically, they, they base it on about 100 miles it is a starting point. And then after you make that first pit stop, then you can tell just what the race car is using for gas. But I think most crew chiefs 
Try to figure between 95 and 100 miles as a baseline. So 100 miles would be 40 laps, and that's about what Jeff Bodine had to do last month to win this race here. Today, so far, we've been seeing runs of anywhere from 34 to 38 laps under the green. Well, I think everybody wants to make that first stop without running gas, Mike, and get an idea just what the fuel mileage, you know, these race cars are getting because the camshaft combination and different things they run in the engine, that'll, uh, that'll tell you what they're going to get for fuel mileage. And we have a good race going on here between Jeff Bodine and Mark Mark. Jeff Bodine trying to move back up to the front of the pack after a pit stop that might have gone a second or two longer than he would have liked. There's Joe Rutman just ahead of Bodine, Mark Martin, and Kenny Schrader. So Rutman being carried on the rundown as one lap behind the race leader. He's in that slender U Oldsmobile of Bob Clark. Jeff Bodine dispensing with Rutman's lap car. Bodine, the number five car, Mark Martin holding right with him as they head up to the tunnel turn. Second and third position. Richard Petty also moving back up a little bit further in the back. And Martin is tucked right under the bumper of Odine's car. Hello, Jeffrey. <laughs> Martin just wanted to let him know I guess he was there. <laughs> Getting a snootful of Chevrolet in Martin's Ford. Martin dancing a little bit around there. Now, when you draft the car as tightly as he's following Bodine into that flat third corner, what happens? Well, really, it, it hurts the car in front. Like Bodine, when, when Mark Martin got up that close to him, uh, it makes Jeff's car very light in the back, and it seemed to upset that Ford a little bit. Uh, he pushed up the racetrack, he turned it down, and, and, and got very loose there. Would you do that on purpose, get up behind somebody and kind of move them around in the air a bit? Not these race drivers. They wouldn't do that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bit to it, perhaps. They're lapping Derek Cope, pure later for Thunderbird, the Spanaway Washington driver. As Mark Martin, is, he's a real charger. He's a, a young fella. He's an energetic kid. Boy, he really charges with that race car. He's a bundle of energy. We asked him yesterday if he finds it hard to conserve his race car and hold what he has. Well, if, I, if I've got the race car to go to the front, I'm going to the front. I'm not going to sit. No way. I want to lead these races every lap that I possibly can, but I don't want to overextend. But if the car will go there, in my eyes, that's not overextending. If I think, if I'm sitting there and I, and I know that it will go to the front and it will lead the race, then it'll do it comfortably. And if it won't do it, then I'm going to have to do the best I can do, get as far forward as I can, and then sit there. Because, and I'm stuck there because if I tried any harder, I'd be, be backing up. In other words, you'll see no stroking from the number six car. No, Mark has just told us that, uh, you know, he is going to drive the race car for 500 miles as hard as she'll go. He's the third place car, and here's the race leader, Bill Elliott, working around uh, race traffic. Elliott working past Benny Parsons. And it looks like the Rodney Combs car in a tight pack there as they come off turn number three. Ernie Irvin also in that pack, the rookie driver. Combs ducks to the inside. He's in the AC Buick trying to move on Benny Parsons. They are one lap down to race leader Bill Elliott now. Elliott is trying to check out. Uh, he's just trying to walk away from the field. And he has told us if the car feel, I'm going to run the car where it's comfortable. And the bad news for the rest of the field, if being uh, half a lap out front is comfortable for Bill Elliott. Well, you can be sure that Bill Elliott is the type of race driver that uh, that Coors Ford right now will go a little bit faster because Bill does not run as fast as she'll go all day long. He's just running comfortable. And like you said, that just happens to be a half a track ahead of everybody else. Fourth of July, or second of July, they own the Firecracker 400. And on race morning, Elliott said his car was running horrible. It had been running horrible all weekend. He won the race. He is not a fellow who is uh, want to make boastful predictions about how his car is going to do or even about how he's running at any given time. Now, Mike, he's the type of driver that will never come out and say, uh, you know, this course Ford is flying. He always tells you, well, it's pretty good or we might have a little bit of a chassis problem. We're going to work on it during the race. And those are usually the races that Bill Elliott is very tough in. So Elliott's out in front. Jeff Bodine is the second place car with 77 laps complete. 
We've been watching Mark Martin, who's third, Ken Schrader, who's fourth, and look who's popped up here in the fifth spot once again. Richard Petty's been very strong all day long, and, uh, you know, he's been poking around the front there, so I think we're going to see more of Richard before the end of this race. This track has been good, Richard Petty. He's fifth, leading Darrell Waltrip. Has really done well on this speedway. Of course, he holds the record for wins at most of the NASCAR track. From 74 to 84 here at Pocono, Petty led at least a lap in 13 straight races, and that is a record here at Pocono International Raceway. A lot of smoke and a spin at turn three. Top of the straightaway, Dale Jarrett in the Hardy's Oldsmobile loops it around and we get caution flag number three of the day it comes out working lap 79 a lot of smoke out of Jarrett's car did he break something I don't think so Mike I look like Dale lost it up there in the turn and got sideways he did a heck of a job keeping it back straight and, and staying out of harm's way Jeff Bodine in the pit here's Pat Patterson and they're going to make a four tire change Mike Joy on Jeff Bodine's car they were running extremely well and this will give them a break to put another set of fresh tires on the car Bodine's wife, Kathy, was keeping up with everything on the computer as Bodine is down and gone. Bodine back into the action. Pick up his first Winston Cup career win on this track, first win for this track here in June. I think Bill Elliott was past pit road when the caution came out, so that's going to put Bill back a ways because the lead cars behind him have had a chance to come into pits, get their service, and they're already back out there. To go. Bob Heiss is there. Elias again uh, back in, and they're only changing the. Well, no, they are going to go to a four tire change. They had only two up on the wall a moment ago, but they are going to four tires. Gas is in. They are not changing any of the wedge or deflection of the spoiler at all. On go the left side tires, and he's just about ready to take off again. Ernie Elliott told me, uh oh, he has stalled on pit road. Elliott stalled momentarily, but he's fired up and gone again late getting into the pits and even later getting out. That's one time, Mike, where leading a race was a disadvantage. Let's go to Pat Patterson. This is the tire that just came off of Jeff Bodine's car, and as you see right here, Mike Joy, we've got some rubber that is starting to come off of it, which certainly, if you'd have gone another maybe all five to ten more laps, it certainly could have developed into a blistering situation. So it just takes a little bit of time to figure out how these tires are going to wear, but this tire certainly had some, uh, some wear on it. The Hoosier tires being used by all the cars in this event here today. Let's take a look at what brought off the caution flag as Dale Jarrett got loose up in turn number three. Something happened on his Hardy's Oldsmobile, and that's why we're under uh, this third caution flag of the day. The field going by under yellow. Let's take another look at what brought out this caution. Well, here we have... Uh uh, Dale Jarrett coming into view here, and he just got in the three in, in the back end of the car, got loose, but he did a good job holding the race car down and not getting up into the traffic, because right behind him you had Jeff Bodine and Mark Martin coming along. So we're under caution, and uh, one of our new viewers to NASCAR Racing, Fernando Valdez of Pasadena, California, says, what does caution mean? Well, when they drop the green flag to start this race, the race is 500 miles and we race until it's finished. The only time the yellow flag or this caution flag is displayed is if something happens on the racetrack that makes it unsafe for the drivers to compete under green flag conditions. Then they'll wave this caution flag and all the drivers have to slow down behind the pace car until whatever caused the accident or incident is cleaned up and the track is safe to race on again. So that's when we say we're under the caution as we are right now. And it looks like, uh, it seems like Sterling Marlin is still smoking, but the car is still running. So maybe it's a problem that's not going to put him out. I'm sure it's hurting the performance of his race car, but he's still out there getting Winston Cup points. Another question, this one from Patty Hung of Corning, New York, wanting to know why Cale Yarborough is not in that Hardy's car today, and Dale Jarrett is doing the driving. I think Cale has made a decision to limit his racing schedule to eight or ten races or twelve, whatever it might be, and he's picked out the speedways. The rest of the speedways that he's not going to compete because of the schedule being 29 or 30, he has Dale Jarrett drive the races that he's not going to. And Jarrett, in the races when Cale competes, Jarrett hops into Haas Ellington's car, so he gets to run the entire 29 race circuit. So thanks for your question. There's a hurry back BA. That, of course, for Bobby Allison, the number 12 driver of the Miller Buick. 
and we all hope he does. Certainly want to congratulate Bobby on his progress so far and what we hope is a speedy recovery. We're trying to make a speedy recovery here from this caution incident at turn number three. And off turn number three here at Pocono International Raceway, out past the parking lot, stand the unofficial greeter of Pocono International Raceway out on the street leading into the racetrack. Let's meet him. This is the official welcoming committee at Pocono Raceway. Andy Matthews and Al Kloiber. They've been doing it since the track opened. All dressed in their unique attire. It wouldn't be a race without them. Oh, crazy idea. Seeing the people out here have nothing to lose. I fear, come on, I pass my time away. I got a bottle, nobody don't go to bar rooms, got a drink, got a smoke. So what am I gonna do? I have to have some some enjoyment. So the people will like it. So what about the hats? Do you make those and yeah, sell I make, them? Yeah, I make it myself. Oh now and then somebody wants one, I get so I get rid of one. How much you sell them for? Oh, what are the ones with the horns? They get about fifty-five dollars or fifty bucks. And the ones without horns, they usually get thirty-five dollars, thirty dollars for it. I understand you once sold one to Paul Newman. I did. <laughs> yeah, he enjoyed it. Come on, he said, sure, try me more for it. He said, I said, yeah, thanks for the hat, thanks for the hat. I said, I knew who you were. I said, I'll charge hundred dollars for it. <laughs> Not forty dollars. <laughs> you guys are really a fixture at the racetrack. Oh, we enjoy it. The people enjoy it. That's the main thing. Have you ever been to a race? Never been in the track. <laughs> Never been in the Want to? But I'm interested in it. We have more fun out here than in the track. I'll tell you what, this is a lot of fun, and if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. What if I join in, guys? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pat, that looks good on you. <laughs> the uh, the antler men. Fella, when Paul Newman came to buy that hat, uh, they were saying he didn't know who he was. He says, Newman, he says, I used to work with an Al Newman. Are you any, any relation? Had no idea uh, who the Oscar winner was. <laughs> That's the type of hat, Mike, that you don't want to wear in deer season, deer hunting <laughs> no, season. No, <laughs> definitely not. It's going to be boxing season here on Viewer's Choice, live on July the 28th, the IBF Middleweight Championship. You'll have a chance to see two undefeated boxers. Frank Tate is 23-0 with 13 knockouts. Michael Nunn, 30-0, the number one contender with 19 knockouts. Viewer's Choice, July 28th, live, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, live from Las Vegas, the IBF Middleweight Championship. Hope you can join Viewer's Choice for that one. We're at Pocono, Pennsylvania for the AC Sparkplug 500. We're under the third caution of the day. 81 laps have been completed as we work around the racetrack under yellow. Jeff Bodine up front, Ken Schrader, Daryl Waltrip, Richard Petty are the front four. Taking a look from the Goodyear Blimp, America, our thanks to the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company for providing these rather unique views of the competition and the action here at Pocono. There's the entrance to the sports car course that's used by SCCA and RCCA, amateur events, and a lot of their workers are here at Pocono helping to man the corners and keep this racetrack safe for the competitors. And that's a different view. I'd have to take a ride up there and just see what a race looks like. Well, there's a look at us. We're high atop uh, the grandstand up on our perch. Yeah. Having a look at all the action here at Pocono and that long front straightaway. It is a, a unique racetrack. This, um, and the view from the Goodyear blimp, excellent. Uh, I'd like to take a ride in that thing, Mike, I believe. Uh, completely different from an airplane. Maybe we can get them to uh, take us up there one time. It'd certainly be a, it'll be a neat view. We're under caution. Again, this caution brought out by Dale Jarrett, who spun at turn number three, and the track crew looks like they've completed their work there. So we should be uh, not too far away from going back to a green flag condition. Uh, Pat Scanlon has some more of our viewer questions. Pat? That's right, Mike. A lot of people have been calling in our 1-800-VIEWER-5 number, and Nadia Bernard of Union, Ohio, wants to know how many times Chevys and Fords have won here at Pocono. Well, they've run 21 Winston Cup races going into today's competition. The Chevrolets have won 10 times, so the Fords, two victories. Bill Elliott holding both those victories for Ford. Jeff Bodine, the last to win for Chevrolet, the last time NASCAR was here at Pocono. Working caution here. Jeff Bodine, Ken Schrader in the Hendrick car. At the front of the pack under the L. Looks like we'll have at least another two or so laps under the caution flag. Rick Wilson coming to the pit lane and Benny Parsons is on pit road. Junie Donlevy and the crew. We've not yet had a chance to talk to Benny, but perhaps after this pit stop, we can get an appraisal from the man who's won the Daytona 500 and the Winston Cup, 
on how his car is running today. Benny nearly won the race at Atlanta, was leading handily and had the misfortune to go a little too long on a gas stop. They missed it by one lap, ran out of gas and had to pit under green to take him out of contention. Benny Parsons coming off the pit lane to rejoin the field. Now, Bill Elliott's crew has been saying they're not having any tire problems. Everything's fine. Now, let's double check that with Bob Heiss. Okay, on that last pit stop from Bill Elliott, they took off this left rear tire and look at the uh, pitted marks on one side. That one really wore out and the team went after some tires from a car that has gone out of the race. They didn't tell me which team and they bought another set of tires to replace this one. And this tire is very hot at the moment. Tire off Bill Elliott's car as we circulate under the third caution flag of the day. I believe we now have radio contact with Benny Parsons. Uh, let's check in with a bullseye barbecue sauce car. Uh, Benny Parsons, Mike Joy, can you copy us? Yes, sir, Mike. I read you loud and clear. Benny, how are you guys going today? Looks like you had to make one stop under the green, and now just in under caution. What did they do to the car? Well, this past time, believe it or not, Mike, we made a pit stop to tape the window net. Benny, we've been taking questions from our viewers through a toll-free number. And Bob Elliott wants to know if you bring a backup car to the racetrack or just the car that you're in right now. No, we bring a backup car, as most, as most everyone with a sponsor. You know, our sponsor, Bullseye Barbecue Sauce, would, be very, would feel very badly if we, something happened to this car and we would not be able to run this race. So for that reason, we bring a backup. Benny, good luck the rest of the day. Who looks really strong so far? Looks like the, the 5, the 9, the 17, the 25. Those are the guys that uh, so far. And the 6 car. He's running very well. Benny, thanks. We'll be back to you later on. Good luck today. Thanks. Benny Parsons giving us uh, the live live from right out there on the racetrack view. As Chris Economaki would say, what's it like out there? There's the answer. <laughs> Benny is quite a competitor and quite a guy. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to and, and, and always has some very good answers. Look at Michael Waltrip's car. Rookie Brad Nofsinger. There's Ernie Irvin, Joe Rutman, and Derek Cope as we look back through the field here. There's Benny Parson as they come out of turn number three. And we're still under caution. Apparently, it has taken a while getting the debris cleaned up and resorting the field, getting everybody in the proper line for the restart. So now the safety car is apparently going to send Jeff Bodine and Daryl Waltrip around. Now, as we mentioned, when the caution came out, Bill Elliott was a lap around coming back to get on to pit road and so inadvertently cars may have been overlapped that NASCAR did not intend to be lapped once the caution flag was displayed. So we're looking now for the Goodyear blimp America as the cars go through turn number two. Mark Kynett from Spring, Texas flying the blimp for us today and Glenn Hampton giving us those great pictures from out of the Goodyear blimp and again our thanks to the folks at the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company for making these great pictures available to us. Look how that parking lot is filled. They always say the second race here is the one out of the parking lot after the event. There's Rusty Wallace. He is 14 laps down coming out of the garage area after replacing that transmission. It seems like Harold Kinder is uh, trying to flag a few of the cars around and, and slow some of the other ones down. And it seems like the pace car has, has picked up Bill Elliott over here. So I guess they're not sure, you know, because of the pit stop, uh, where everybody is at right now. And again, we want to get it sorted out before we put this race back under green. So the cars that are on the lead lap are racing there. So they're getting it set now and moving some cars around behind the safety car. Here's Rusty Wallace. And here's the pace car on the front stretch. So Wallace moving around to catch up in line. So it will take a minute or two here to reset the field. Wallace is the leader. Mark Martin is the second place car. Kyle Petty is third. Excuse me, Elliot the leader, I'm sorry. Mark Martin the second place car. Kyle Petty is third. Brett Bodine is fourth. Rick Wilson is fifth. Sixth is Jeff Bodine. Seventh is Ken Schrader. Eighth, Daryl Waltrip. Ninth, Richard Petty. And tenth, Dale Earnhardt. That's the way we have it from scoring. Rusty Wallace now catching up with that pack. As they come down and around, he's behind the safety car. And let's try to check in with a Kodiak Pontiac. Rusty Wallace, can you copy us here in the tower? Starting in, you're the first breaking up. Rusty, 
Rusty, this is Mike Joy up in the TV tower. Can you copy us now? Yeah, I got you. Go ahead. It's got to be frustrating to have to spend 14 laps in the garage, but still, the way this point chase is, you guys can't spend the day there. You've still got to go out and race hard the rest of the day. Yeah, that's real right. There's no doubt about that. The most frustrating thing is to have the fastest car out here and be stuck back here. But, uh, you know, everybody's going to break something throughout the year, and we just haven't broken anything. And today we broke a transmission. I'm just going to do the best job I can or try to get as many points as I can and go home and uh, get ready for Talladega next week. We're not quitting. We're not giving up. Rusty, we're taking, uh, we're taking some questions from our viewers. Jack Barner wants to know how much the RPMs drop here at Pocono from your max down the straightaway, and how low does it get in the corner? I'm not even paying attention to that stuff right now, but it gets down to about 5,500 coming off the very last corner. But uh, when you're driving these cars or as quick as we are, you don't have much time to still stare at all the gauges and not just uh, take a look at that stuff. I'm just trying to win this race. Okay, thanks, Rusty, and we'll talk to you a bit later on under caution. Appreciate your speaking with us. All right, thank you. Coming along under the caution, now getting the field reoriented, and in line, we should be only a lap or two from going back to the green. At 85 laps, Bill Elliott, the race leader, Mark Martin, Kyle Petty, Brett Bodine, that's uh, Jeff's younger brother, and the Florida driver, Rick Wilson, in the Morgan McClure Racing Oldsmobile. He's a fifth place car. Jeff Bodine is sixth. They're all the Hendrick cars. Ken Schrader in seventh. Darrell Waltrip in eighth. Richard Petty will be lined up ninth, and Dale Earnhardt tenth when we go back to racing under the green. Pocono International Raceway. There's the three corners. And here's a look at Rick Wilson. Wilson being moved to the back of the order by starter Harold Kinder coming past here slow, so trying to get him resorted into position. There's the starter on your upper left, Harold Kinder, trying to move cars around into position. Rob, now we more often see this happening on the short tracks, where drivers have a tendency on a caution flag not to know quite who they're racing, what position to get in. Not too often here on the super speedway. Well, normally that's not a problem, Mike. Uh, you know, today we just, uh, because of the pit stops and, and green flag stops, uh, cars have got in a pit and jumped back out on a racetrack and, and the way the caution come out it's got everybody confused because I believe I'm a little confused on where everybody is at but NASCAR is trying to work the situation out and get everybody lined up before we go back to green because once they go back to green then you can't fix it. This is Mike Joy with Ron Bouchard the 1981 NASCAR Rookie of the Year and Talladega 500 winner and uh, Richard Scourin I believe it is calling from East Windsor Connecticut wants to know what your racing plans are. Well, Mike, there's a possibility next year, and, and that's something we're working on. We'd like to run eight or ten races, and uh, I'm trying to put a program together with Mike Laughlin to be a part owner on the race car and compete in eight or ten of the major events. One of the things that's holding us up is sponsorship, and we are talking to a couple of people. So hopefully we can put something together and compete in a few races next year. Well, I know you've been busy this season uh, and haven't been at a lot of the races, trying to get your car business underway up there in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Uh, but had a lot of fun down in the garage area talking to some of the folks this weekend. I did. Uh, you know, it's been about a, uh, about a year that I've been away from the racetrack, and, and it was just inviting to come back, and uh, Buddy Baker, Richard Petty, Darrell Waltrip, Dale Earnhardt, all of the guys, to, to give me such a warm welcome. You know, uh, where have you been? When are you coming back? We miss you. And uh, I think that makes me feel good, and hopefully next year we will put something together. Look at some Dale Earnhardt fans. Big infield crowd here at Pocono. They have restricted the camping rules here, so not too many people in here last night, but now uh, this place is pretty well packed. 17 cars are on the lead lap here at Pocono. Next time by, we'll be looking for the green flag, and Jeff Bodine is coming to pit road. One of the strong contenders to win this race, and last month's winner, as they come by and take one to go, Bodine, Mike Alexander, Phil Parson, Terry Gant, and Rick Wilson will all get a splash of fuel. So, late, late stops under green, and again, this has got to be, this sounds like a big Waddell Wilson strategy move. Well, I think it's a situation where they've run five, six, or seven laps under caution, Mike, and uh, to come in and, and get a, a couple of gallons of gas in the race car, it's only going to mean that they can go that much longer, and in, in this race here, up till a, a few points ago, had no caution. So that might be a smart move for some of the guys that have dropped in and got gas. 
Let's check in that pit. Bob Heiss is there. Okay, I'm, I'm with Waddell Wilson, uh, Jeff Bodine's crew chief. Waddell, you're hot under the collar, I know. Why? Well, I think that was a very bad call they just made. The, the nine car went past when the caution come out. We were second, and we was able to get in the pits. Well, as far as it is around here, you can come in, change your tires, and leave before the man comes back, knowing that he didn't get the caution. And we I stood here and watched the car go out before the nine car ever got back. So we should be leading the race. And I know that there was a lot of guys on pit road, though, that did get caught with the nine car. So they dropped you back in the pack. But we got penalized with the rest of them, although it was a good call on our part, and we done the right thing. Okay, let's go to Pat Patterson right now. Well, Larry McClure is down in the Kodak pits. Rick Wilson, his driver, and uh, you guys had a black flag out a few minutes ago, came in for a splash of fuel. Are you confused? We're really confused. We don't know what's going on, and... Uh, you know, I think they've got it figured out, but I think they had to stop some cars, let some cars pass to get the scoring squared away. So uh, it's a long race, and uh, we feel like the Kodak film, Delco Remy Oldsmobile will be there close to the front at the end. You guys had a great run down in uh, Daytona Beach just a couple weeks ago. Bo uh, Bill Elliott just barely edging you out. How's the car running today, Larry? Well, it's running pretty good. It's been a little bit loose today, but uh, we've made some chassis adjustments, so we think we're on go right now. Good luck to you. Thank you. Getting set to go back to racing. The cars on the lead lap. Bill Elliott is on the point. Also on the lead lap. Mark Barton, Kyle Petty, Brett Bodine, and Jeff. Kenny Schrader, Daryl Walton, Dale Earnhardt, Richard Petty. Lake Speed is up there. So is Phil Parsons, Alan Kulwicki, Harry Gant, Ricky Rudd, Sterling Marlin, Davey Allison, and Rick Wilson. They're on the lead lap. Uh, Rusty Wallace uh, started on the bottom, being laps down, and has passed Bill Elliott in driving away. So Wallace... One of the quickest cars here may well be now just 13 laps down. Richard Petty once came from six laps behind to win a race at Dover, Delaware. Here's Mark Martin, and he's on the way up, moving up past Terry Labonte, and we're scoring Terry Labonte unofficially as one lap behind in the Junior Johnson car. We'll double check that, but Martin now goes up into the second position, and believe Kyle Petty would be the third place car. Out in front, Bill Elliott. After NASCAR reshuffled the order under the caution flag, there's Rusty Wallace in front of the race leader, Bill Elliott. These cars, you can see what a tremendous burst of air they create. That camera they're going past, it's fixed, and it bobs up and down through the wall of wind from these cars. Jeff Bodine way on the inside, and he overhauls about eight cars going into that turn one. Jeff was very strong, and he's trying to get back to the front here. And uh, I'm sure Waddell, uh, after we spoke to him, he didn't feel that they got a fair shake on that deal. So uh, Bodine is driving back to the front. He's in a hurry, and he's taking leg speed with him. Report from scoring. Rusty Wallace now 12 laps behind. He's made up two. Lake speed, number 83. The former world go-kart champion. Took that experience, parlayed it into a Winston Cup ride, bankrolled his own team with Daryl Derringer as team manager the first year. Has driven for a couple of teams, including the one that started on the pole today, the Raymock team. Now he runs his own team, Daryl Bryant's the crew chief. Rusty Wallace, in car number 27, he is towing the race leader around, Bill Elliott. pick up a bunch of Winston Cup points today. Very few cars out of the race. Bob Shack, Jimmy Means, Eddie Beerswall, Mike Potter, and Rodney Combs all reported out. And Elliott making no real move to try and uh, get Rusty Wallace. Of course, no need. Wallace still 12 laps down. But like we said, Elliott will run the car where it's comfortable. I think Rusty right now, as fast as he is, uh, he's helping Bill pull away. Uh, right now you can look uh, almost see in the screen that we have Morgan Shepard another car that's been a lap down he's been trying to get his lap back and right now Morgan is running very well in the Valvoline Buick I mean Valvoline Pontiac so at the point Bill Elliott in the number nine four there's Morgan Shepard into view second is Mark Martin Darrell Waltrip is third and Ken Schrader shows up as the fourth place car unofficially that would put Richard Petty in fifth Jeff Bodine in sixth, Brett Bodine in seventh. Average speed down by the caution flag, 126 miles an hour. Three cautions today. The Dale Jarrett caution, the third and longest one, as they tried to sort out the running order from NASCAR scoring. 
it whistles past Rusty Wallace. 12 laps behind is the leader. Here's the battle as they move past the lap car of Bobby Hillen, the Miller Buick. Ken Schrader gets past Darrell Waltrip again. Schrader and, and Darrell have uh, managed to run together most of this race, and Richard Petty, and we see Jeff Bodine coming up on the inside here. Brett Bodine with them, and Jeff will move underneath Richard Petty, and they are pushing Benny Parsons' car to the garage area. Tough break for the veteran, and Bodine is right up underneath Richard Petty as they come to the front straightaway. Bobby Hillen trying to draft pass with Petty. Dave Marcus on pit road, and they may have got into one another right there. Bodine wants the track position inside. Lake Speed tucked up under Bodine. They're going to kick Richard Petty back a spot, and wham! Earnhardt and Brett Bodine got together. And away they go. Lake Speed hits the wall. And one car, Derek Koch, goes spinning off to the infield. Cars are still trying to thread their way through. Caution is out. At lap 93, fourth caution of the day. Oh, Lake Speed's car. That's a shame. It looked like Lake hit the wall pretty hard, and he was really a victim of circumstance there. And Rusty Wallace is racing back to the caution here to try to get his lap back, or one more of his laps back. So Wallace, by beating Bill Elliott back to the flag, will keep that lap, and he'll be 12 laps down and come all the way around. Morgan Shepard will also come back on the lead lap. Here's Elliott's crew hard at work. Right side tire. Wife of the windshield, Bob Heiss is there. Oh, another four-tire change for the Elliott crew, and they're putting some wedge now in that left rear window. Working hard, just about set and ready to go, and Elliott drops off the jack a little bit. There it is. Finally get it out, and they're gone. The leader back into the race, and he may have surrendered the lead for a lap, as not all the cars came to pit road. There is what's left of Lake Speed and Derek Cope's automobiles. Let's take another look at what happened going into turn number one. Okay, as we see here, Lake Speed has got under Richard, and they touch a little bit. Uh, right here, Earnhardt gives Brett Bodine a little tap. He runs into the back of Lake Speed, and then they all get tangled together. And then up here, it looks like Richard and Lake get back together, and Lake ends up hitting the wall. Miraculously, Bobby Hill in the number eight car you'll see goes through there unscathed. Watch the eight car on the right side of the screen. Bodine and Petty were the first cars to bump. They touched a little bit. Here's Lake Speed. Ooh, and around. Richard gets sideways. Brett Bodine is pushed into it by Earnhardt, who was pushed into it by Derek Cope. Wants to chase him in the garage after anybody. So what a pile. And cars spinning in every direction. Wow, a tough break. It all started with the just little minute collision. Jeff Bodine on the inside, Richard Petty on the outside, and then Lake Speed got up into Richard, and as a result, we may have two, three, or four cars out of this race. Let's go to Pat Patterson. I'm with Daryl Bryan, crew chief on the Wins Kmart uh, Oldsmobile. Daryl, did Lake say what happened out there? Yeah, he went down the corner under Petty, and he said Petty just come down right on top of him. He said that's twice today, the first time we did he come down and bent the wheel on the car now i guess it's toward all the pieces you guys were running good yeah the car's running real well which i know is close racing but you know you got to give a little bit and take a little bit too it's daryl bryant pat are they done for the day is that their feeling yeah they are they're done they're headed to the garage mike looking at the car a lot of cosmetic damage and perhaps Look suspension problems as well here's dale earnhardt on pit road and he's got some damage the right front of that good wrench chevrolet as David Smith comes around with the jack and crew chief, Kirk Shelmerdy does repairs. Now we're in Richard Petty's pit with Pat Patterson. Well, as you can see, Mike, the uh, tire marks on Richard's the left side, as, as well as some sheet metal damage there on the right. It's uh, not really severe damage, but you can sure tell where they've been pushing and shoving out there. You can see the white on the uh, front left wheel, and uh, they say it's a non-contact sport, but uh, looks like there's some contact going on out there today, gentlemen. So what was just a minor bump down in turn number one between first Jeff Bodine and Richard Petty and then Lake Speed and Richard Petty that brought out this the fourth caution of the day. He came out of lap number 93. The Kodiak crew, Barry Dodson, and his gang servicing Rusty Wallace. 
getting him back onto the speedway. Now 12 laps in rears, and Brett Bodine in the Bud Moore car, who was also involved in that accident. Bodine pushed into the back of one of those cars uh, by Dale Earnhardt, who was pushed by Derek Cope. Ronnie, how much break do you have getting into a corner when all of a sudden things stack up? Well, Mike, uh, what happened there is, is they were all coming off of the corner, and rather than being under break, everybody was on the gas. And as a couple of race cars up front touched, they rubbed, they slowed up. Uh, it was a chain reaction all down the line, and that's basically how that accident happened. When you're running that close, going into a corner at 160 miles an hour, it takes probably all of your reflexes and experience to get through the corner running side by side like that. Never mind that when all hell breaks loose as it did just there. That's very true, Mike. And, uh, you know, it was one of the situations, again, I think a lot of times in racing we see chain reaction accidents. And, and that's what we had there. Everybody was running hard. Everybody was running close. And a couple of race cars get into each other. Before you know it, uh, one hits one in the back and one guy gets turned sideways and, and you have six or eight cars involved like we did over there. Here's Earnhardt back in. Bob Heiss. Okay, Earnhardt is in the pits and it's right front damage pretty badly. The crew is in the front now trying to pull the hood up and away from the radiator. I don't see any water coming out at all. They're hoping they can get enough of the metal away from the radiator that it's not going to give a problem. Richard Childress now rushing over with some uh, tape. They've already made a little patch of tape to go into an area down right on the grill area to try to hold the grill down. The, the front part of the grill is loose right there. Now Earnhardt's going to have to pull out and get back into the lineup again. Ron, that broken nose is not going to make uh, Earnhardt's car any more aerodynamic. Well, it's not going to help here on the long straightaway, Mike. Uh, you know, you do run 175, 180 mile an hour, and that's one of the reasons they were trying to put the duct tape on the front to cover up the big holes to stop the air from going in at the tire. Richard Petty on pit road came close to winning this race a month ago. He's been in contention here. Surprisingly, he has only one victory here at Pocono in the first Winston Cup race ever run here. He won in a Dodge in a race slowed by many cautions to 115 miles an hour. Pat Scanlon is down with the NASCAR officials down in race control. Pat. OK, Mike, here with Les Richter in race control, which has been very busy since the last accident. First off, let's, let's go back one caution. Can you explain what was happening on the scoring? Well, uh, what, what has occurred is when the caution came out, the leader did not get the caution. They, the, uh, the middle of the field got the caution flag. So when the uh, leaders uh, that hadn't got the caution came around to take the caution, uh, they pulled into the pit area, and the car that was remaining, uh, that was picked, uh, would have been picked up by the pace car, when uh, those cars came around, uh, inadvertently, a, a uh, color causes to pick up uh, a wrong car. And so what we've been doing, uh, running a few extra uh, caution laps here, uh, to try to get the realignment of the field and we were just uh, in that process and had gotten uh, the field to where uh, they should have been if we would have uh, captured the, the the right car when we had another caution flag down in turn one which you're working on right now that's, 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 where, that's where we were as we came in. That occurred, uh, the crash. Uh, understand it's going to be a lengthy crash because I, what, you have to do some welding on the, uh, the wall? Uh, yes, um, the outer wall, um, uh, a welding joint um, uh, came apart, and so that has to be uh, put back up, and um, they'll have that done in as quick a time as they can. They have a good crew here, and... Um, so we're going to run a few more laps here, and if this is going to take a little longer, we'll probably uh, uh, red flag the race and, and make sure that we don't use up too many laps under the caution. Okay, what does that mean now for your crew, uh, the activity here? That's got to make your job a little tougher. Well, uh, uh, running a race, uh, it does never get easier. <laughs> and uh, it's just a, a situation where um, uh, we want to make sure when we go back racing that anything that might have occurred where we had a realignment or a, uh, a, a car not in a position it should have been in we want to get it <coughs> uh, taken care of before we go back so it'll save us problems at the end of the day when 
uh, the results are posted and and then people see, well, I wasn't there. And I was <laughs> here. A, and so forth always and so a little bit of debate. All right, so. Les Victor, thanks very much. News from here, race control. Perhaps the race may be red flagged while the welding is done on the fence. The wall here at Pocono surrounding this two and a half mile speedway is steel boilerplate. It is unique on the NASCAR cir circuit. It is half an inch thick and three feet high, and it's backed up by steel I beams and a dirt berm all the way around this racetrack. Uh, but when it does receive a hard lick, as it did just then, that boiler plate from the force will buckle, has to be heated, moved back into position, and if that's not possible, they have to re-weld another piece in. That's what we're going to do. So there you can see, out of turn number one, where a piece of that wall has been pushed back and the I-beams that support uh, the boiler plate. Uh, you, have you had a meeting with that? Yes, I have, Mike. And, and this wall here is probably as hard as any place you can ever hit. Uh, the speeds are high. And you have a lot of room from the bottom of the racetrack to travel up the racetrack and hit the wall with very hard force, it seems like. And as you can see there, as, as heavy as the wall is, as thick as the boilerplate is, uh, Lake Speed has really give that thing a shot where he has knocked that boilerplate apart. You're listening to Ron Bouchard, who ran 10 Winston Cup races here at Pocono. Led seven laps in two different occasions. And during one race, had one top five and four top ten finishes here. So away from the pilot of the Goodyear Blimp, America, that's been giving us these beautiful pictures of the Pocono Mountains of eastern Pennsylvania. Huge crowd on hand here, not an... should be pit stops for the leaders in about five or eight laps. According to the report from Pat Patterson and Bob Heiss, we'll see these leaders on pit road if we stay green. 14 cars on the lead lap here at Pocono, Pennsylvania. Ricky Rudd, last car on the lead lap. Earnhardt right in front of him. Kyle Petty, Sterling Marlin, Harry Gant, Alan Kulwicki all running on the lead lap. So too Jeff Bodine and Morgan Shepard. 
Here's Darrell Waltrip, and he's right in the thick of it. He's the fifth-place car. Yeah, we have Darrell now. He's past Terry, and Mark Martin is behind the 11 again. So these three here have diced back and forth, and, and uh, at any time they can pass each other, it seems like. How frustrating is that? You work and work and work to pass a guy, and five laps later he's passed you again, and you wonder what you did all that for. Well, sometimes very frustrating. Uh, but, you know, it's part of racing. Everybody's race car changes, and and right now we can see these three cars are very, very close to each other, and they've just been drafting by each other. Let's add a car to the lead lap. Rick Wilson of the Kodak car made his pit stop without losing a lap. He's a 15th place machine. One lap down, Mike Alexander, Mike Waltrip, and the rookie battle, Ken Bouchard and Brad Knopfsinger just one position apart for the rookie of the race honors. Buddy Baker makes a pit stop, puts on two tires and takes on gas. You're with the leader, Bill Elliott, trying to win his second race in a row. And Pat Patterson is in his pit. Well, Mike, I think it'd be a miscalculation to say that uh, they're worried in the Elliott pit about Davey pinching him. However, this next stop is very, very critical, and both Dan and Ernie Elliott are taking a lot of time trying to figure out exactly which lap, because as you well know, if a caution flag flies when they're sitting here on a green flag stop, this whole thing gets reshuffled all together. Traditionally, on the super speedways, the Fords have not gotten as good gas mileage as the Chevrolet-powered cars, but they've been catching up. Well, they have got a lot closer, Mike, and I think whoever out of the lead cars, the first three cars, whatever type pit stop they make, if they come in and gas only, they delegate what is going to happen to the rest of the field. If Elliott should come in and gas only, everybody else has to do the same. If Bill comes in and change tires, or two tires, this will delegate what everybody else has to do that may be catching this number nine. Sport. Elliott continuing to circulate as we look around and wait for pit activity among the leaders. So Elliott up front, Ken Schrader, Davey Allison, then Darrell Waltrip, the new fourth place car, Terry Labonte in fifth, Mark Martin in sixth, Jeff Bodine, Morgan Shepard, Alan Kulwicki, and Harry Gant, the current top ten. Getting down to it here. Going to be one more pit stop and then crunch time. Kyle Petty is the first of the lead pack to come on to pit road. Glenn and Leonard Wood and crew servicing the Citgo Ford. And Mike, it looks like gas only for Kyle Petty. The rookies, way back, have been having quite a battle. As we mentioned, one of them is your brother, and here they are. Brad Knopfsinger in the Sunoco car, rookie of the race twice this season at Talladega and Charlotte. Your younger brother, Ken, there in the white and red Bob Whitcomb car, still looking for a sponsor, we might as well point out, <laughs> has been rookie of the race five times in a row, and then three times more, so eight times this season. Ernie Irvin is running back behind them. Kenny has been behind Nuffsinger uh, quite a ways. He has managed to catch up, and, and right now he is right behind him. The Mike Kerb owned car. Nice story behind the car number on Nuffsinger's machine. It comes from the J.C. Agajanian stable, number 98, as Parnelli Jones drove it to victory at Indy, and a lot of wins for that car number. Oh, Kerry Agajanian, J.C.'s son, is part of the Mike Kerb racing organization. And the Sunoco Buick carries that number. And Brad Knopfsinger, the former CRA California Sprint Car champion, at the wheel in his first season of Winston Cup racing. Ken Bouchard, of course, out of Massachusetts, came up through the NASCAR modified ranks, ran a few Bush Grand National races. Likewise, in his first season, that's why they have that yellow stripe on the back bumper to point out to the other drivers that they are rookies, but they're running like veterans today, and they're having a whale of a race among themselves. Yes, both of them have run good all day. They both stayed out of trouble. And, and both cars look very equal right here, Mike. For the last two or three laps, they have run about the same. Battling for rookie of the race and for points in the champion Sears Rookie of the Year program. Here's Elliott once again. And will they pit him this time? Ernie Elliott is out on pit road with the signboard. Dale Earnhardt is on pit road, the 13th place car. Bobby Gerhardt coming in for a final stop in the Omar Landis Chevrolet. Elliott rounding the speedway. There's the Coors Melling pit crew. El Elliott has tires up on the wall, Mike. Uh, whether this might be a trick or he might change two tires. 
Well, it takes longer to put in a full tank of gas than it does to change the two tires. So this would might be the right strategy. He's coming down pit road right now, Mike. Let's go to the Elliott pit. Here comes Awesome Bill from Dawsonville. The race leader is in, and it's going to be a gas-only stop. So the tires on the wall, well, they just wanted to make everybody think about it. The tank is full, and Elliott is gone. And here's a candidate for the peak coolest move of the race. Davey Allison pits right with him. Woo, seven-second pit stop for Bill Elliott. And we have Davey Allison in the pit, too, Mike. There's a look at Dan Elliott. Keeping tabs on Davey Allison as Bill is off pit lane and already getting up to speed. Ken Schrader becomes the leader for the second time today. And there is Elliott back up to race speed, moving past Harry Gant. Davey Allison has completed his service, and Mark Martin is due in next time by. Ricky Rudd still running on the lead lap of the Quaker State Buick. He's all done with pit work. Twenty-two laps to go. Now, when will Ken Schrader pit? There's Schrader. He takes over the race lead with Elliott Scott. So Schrader up front. Darrell Waltrip trying to move up. Harry Hyde jumped over the pit wall when uh, Elliott came in, wanted to see exactly what he was going to do. He had told me before, if it goes green all the way, they're just going to get some gas. They are not going to change. But if there is a caution flag, he's got four tires ready to go. Take on gas. There are the two dump cans. They're gravity fed. He'll take the time to take tires. Well, I think we talked about Mark a little bit later in the race. He, he looked like he was getting loose. Uh, matter of fact, Mark Martin is going to get four tires here. Uh, different strategy here. Will this take him out of the race? It's going to take him out of the front contention. Uh, I don't believe he has enough time, enough time to, to utilize the four tires that he's putting on against the leaders. And the pit board is out for Kenny Schrader. Time by Schrader, who has assumed the race lead, will be in. Here's Kenny, and he takes a hard left to get to pit road. Dennis Connor and the crew. And holding the pit board for him upside down, but that's okay. He knows that's his number. Bob Heiss is there. Here's Ken Schrader again, and that's all they're doing. They are look checking under the car on the right side to see how the tires are. They're just getting a tank full of gas and he's away. By one full second, faster pit stop than Elliott. Alan Kowicki, Harry Gant, and Dale Jarrett stopping on this lap as well. Kowicki will take on right side tires. That'll move him back in the running order. Schrader coming up to speed. 20 laps to go. Bobby Hillen in the pit lane and the Stavola brothers, Miller Buick. And Joe Rutman headed for the garage. Gant is away, and now this man, Darrell Waltrip, assumes the lead. Waltrip, a winner at Charlotte four races ago in the World 600. And the pole sitter for the last race on this tour held the Firecracker 400 at Daytona on the 2nd of July. Waltrip continues to run. Terry Labonte's in the pit lane, and he's coming in hot. Junior Johnson crew set to work for Labonte. Gas chassis adjustment at the right rear that's tim brewer on the wrench one turn it looked like a turn or two mike uh, he must be a little bit loose and he took a little wedge out of the chassis labani is away and set to run for the checker which is 19 laps away we'll go to bob heiss on pit road I'm in the Mark Martin pit, and the uh, crew chief, Steve Neal, when I went over to talk to him, he waved me off. He didn't want to talk. He doesn't want to say anything about what's happening, so I can get no information on why they changed four tires to this one anyway. Well, I'm sure they're pretty dejected, having a chance to win this thing, and now the four tires stop. Unless we get a caution, we'll take them out of contention. Yeah, I believe it'll take him out of the first, you know, six or seven spots, Mike. Uh, it's going to drop him back in the field. You know, how much ground he can gain with all of the new tires, I'm not sure. There are two men in this race that have set NASCAR standards for gas mileage, and they're at the front of the field. Darrell Waltrip with a Randy Dorton engine, and there is his crew, and Jeff Bodine with a Waddell Wilson engine is the second place car. Pole sitter Morgan Shepard gets his service. Gas from the Bob Rahilly and Butch Mock crew, and Shepard is back out with 18 laps to run. 
right behind him Mike Waltrip coming into the pits the second place finisher here in June and Mike Beam will put gas in the Waltrip car and they have tires ready there's Kyle Petty being cast by Darrell Waltrip left side tires going on Mike Waltrip's car and the pit sign out for Ken Bouchard, who's been battling with Mike Nossinger for leading rookie of the race. But Walter B is staying out. Jeff Bodine. Bodine on pit road. The second place car, Waddell Wilson bringing him in. This will be fuel. A look at the tires, no more. Jerry Schweitz, the gas man. Away goes Jeff Bodine. Well, two in a row. Five and a half seconds, Mike. A very good pit stop for Bodine. Nobody's done it any quicker today. So he gives up his second spot with Waltrip the leader. Now, we saw Jeff Hammond in the tied pits, and now they have come over the wall with the signboard. So Darrell will be the last of the leaders to make that pit stop for Gas. Bouchard, I got a question for you. Would you stay out there to the last possible lap, hoping for the caution flag? Is that the reason that we see Walter one more time coming past the start finish line? Well, I think Daryl knows that he doesn't have the fastest car at this point here, and and that would be the only thing that uh, could save Daryl or make him win this race. And and he's going to try to go for a caution. Daryl Walter, a winner in this race, seven years ago, his first victory coming in this race, ten years ago today. The 1978 AC Spark Plug 500, but those two, his only Pocono victory. A lot of smoke from the Sterling Marlin car coming down the pit lane. That valve problem has intensified, but Marlin has been moving up in the running order and was posted in sixth position at the time of this pit stop. I think we'll see Daryl this time here, Mike. Everybody is out on pit road, and, and they know if you run out of gas here, everything you work for all day long could be taken away. So I think we'll see Daryl come down pit road this time by. The bright orange and white tied box colors coming out of turn number three, and Walter is very low on the racetrack. This will be the crucial pit stop for the former Winston Cup champion. And he was in danger of being overlapped by Elliott. So Walter comes in for gas, and he will give up the lead to Bill Elliott right here with 15 laps to go. Pat Patterson. Three-time Winston Cup champion is going to take his crew with him down the pit road as they fill it up. He never actually even stopped the car, Mike Joy. It's not going to be enough, though, as Bill Elliott is taking that lead back again. I don't know how we timed that pit stop. The car never stopped. They you just kind of ran can't. along. You can't time it, Mike. It's gave it a little drink. <laughs> So Daryl Walter, he got that one can of gas, and hopefully that's all he needs. But this man has retaken the lead. Now the green flag pit stops are concluded. Bill Elliott back to the front. And Elliott, the pace he's been on these last few races, not quite a repeat of 1985, that miraculous season that saw him do everything on a super speedway. But he's won on the short track this year at Bristol. He won at Dover, Delaware, and he won at Daytona one race ago. So Elliott trying to put together back-to-back -to -back victories. He's third in the Winston Cup points and could possibly take the point lead today. We had a viewer write in and ask if uh, Bill Elliott was growing a beard. There's a look. Few chin whiskers there, and Elliot said he got a little bit of sunburn and didn't want to aggravate it by shaving. I think now, he's trying to go for the Don Johnson look. Well, if he likes the look, it may <laughs> stay there. Who knows? Can't answer that one. I believe Schrader, Mike, has closed the gap a little bit on Bill Elliott. I don't know if he's backed off just a bit, but Schrader has got a little bit closer to him. We can see him coming through uh, three right here, and maybe we can catch uh, Schrader just how far back he is. There's Elliott. And a look back to the next car in line. Second car back will be Schrader. There's one lap car. Bobby, Bobby Gerhardt, Pennsylvania driver, between the two leaders. So there's Elliott going off into turn one. Cutting the corner. Headed out to the Long Pond straightaway.
13 laps to go. Elliott, the race leader. Schrader in second, Bodine after that very quick stop up to third. Labonte is fourth. Davey Allison, the fifth. A Ford, three Chevrolets and a Ford. Uh, Davey lost a little bit of time on that pit stop, Mike. He came in third, now he's running fifth. A look from the Goodyear Blimp America at Bill Elliott down the front straightaway. Kind of looks like Tent City there. Those are the corporate hospitality tents. And looking for Ken Schrader, the second place car. Schrader Chevrolet has had enough to run with just about everybody today. But Elliott, after this last stop, running away. You see how steep the banking is here at turn one compared to the other corners on this racetrack. Bill Elliott, pick him up, up at the front of the pack. There's Elliott, right side of your screen. A healthy margin on Kenny Schrader. Jeff Bodine is third. In fourth is Terry Labonte. Fifth is Davey Allison. Morgan Shepard is sixth. Seventh is Darrell Waltrip. Eighth, Alan Kulwicki. Mark Martin, after that tire change, back to ninth. Tenth is Harry Gant. Dale Earnhardt moves up into 11th. Ricky Rudd in 12th. Rick Wilson and Sterling Marlin on the lead lap. And right now we have Terry Labonte, who has uh, chased down Jeff Bodine. And we have Davey Allison trying to close on the two of them. That's the battle for third with 11 laps to go. Moving up on Ken Bouchard. Third and fourth place, Bodine in third. Labonte in fourth. And Jeffrey's going to take a little bit of time getting past Kenny. That'll allow Davey Allison to close up. Wade calls up from North Attleboro, Mass. Wants to know how driving the race car, if that's harder work than commentating on one of these races. Driving a race car, I think, is easier, Mike. Uh, this here is a lot of work. Uh, it's something new for me. Uh, first time ever. I've done some radio. Uh, this is really the first live TV I've ever done. This is harder. I'd definitely rather be out there. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Labonte got inside of Odine at turn three and almost put his car sideways doing it, and here's Davey. The battle for third. Labonte, Davey Allison, perhaps the car binding up a little down there, but now he's under Jeff Bodine, and he's going past him. Uh, Davey has made up some ground. Uh, he's going to work on Terry now. Davey looks good. His car is fairly quick. Uh, he has a shot for third spot. Ten laps to go, and Bill Elliott has turned in the key, paid the bill, and checked out on the field. There is Elliott moving up on the Mike Waltrip car. Then Bobby Hill in ahead. But Elliott is going away, taking the rest of this field to the cleaners. Yes, Bill has a very comfortable lead uh, with 10 laps to go. Uh, you know, bar any problems, it looks like Bill Elliott's race. Kenny Schrader in second, still trying to gain some ground, but he has a lot of distance to make up. The battle for third is still a good one. And we'll be back to that in a moment. But Elliott coming fast. This will be one of the slowest 500s in Pocono history. 121.7 miles an hour is the average speed, thanks to the lengthy caution flag. But we've seen some great action up front. Kyle Petty has apparently lost a cylinder of the Wood Brothers car. He's been running at reduced speed. And Elliott will now overlap him a second time. Bill Elliott is looking for his 26th Super Speedway victory. Ken Schrader all alone. Trying to pick up that win number one. He's run 106 NASCAR races and he's been close. And he is close again today. This season for Schrader... Again, he had that pole position at Daytona for the 500 in February, perhaps the most prestigious pole of the year. But Schrader is on his way to what will certainly be his best finish of the season. Elliott already three.
three tallies in the win column this year. And here is the race for fourth. Make that third. Third. To him. third. Terry Labonte looks like he had, had trouble or something. Labonte. He slowed. Labonte is slipping back. Yeah. He's probably having that clutch problem, Mike. That or perhaps he got worked up high in turn number one. And took a long time to regain that momentum. Bodine stalking Davey Allison. The two have moved their way up through the pack together after green flag pit stops. Each now has found a drafting partner. Seven laps to go. There they are, Allison Bodine and Labonte. Davey dipping to the inside of the racetrack. I'm trying to break the draft on Jeff Bodine. He just moved to the bottom of the racetrack and Bodine followed him right to the bottom. Bodine miming Allison's every move. And he's shaken off Bodine at turn one. Davey seems to get through one very, very good. Uh, he's opened up and he's done most of his passing right there. And, and right now he has a little bit of a lead on Jeff. Now Bodine's corner has been turn three. Over the tunnel turn, no change. We'll see what happens at turn three. Now, what should Davey Allison's big concern be? Trying to shake off Bodine or trying to catch the front two? Well, right now, Davey has uh, Ken Schrader ahead of him, but Ken Schrader has an awful margin on him. So Davey's best, best thing would be to, you know, protect the spot he has, and that's what he's doing. He's trying to get away from Bodine because he really has no chance of catching the two leaders right now. At turn three, Bodine cannot gain any ground. So with six laps to go, this is the race for third. Elliott the leader, Schrader is second, Allison third, and Bodine now the fourth place car. Terry Labonte is fifth, sixth is Walter, seventh is Shepard, Kulwicki. Up to eighth, the Mark Martin ninth, Terry Earnhardt, 11th. Twelfth is Ricky Rudd, 13th is Rick Wilson, Sterling Marlin is 14th. Those are the cars on the lead lap. Five laps to go. Next time pass for Bill Elliott. Looking for his 27th career victory. He's won 25 on the speedways and one race on the short track this April at Bristol, Tennessee. In a career that spans only 13 seasons, Elliott has racked up $7.2 million in earnings. Not a bad payday. Kenny Schrader, the second place car, trailing Elliott with five to go, 6.8 seconds. That is the difference, first to second. Harry Hyde, Dennis Conner, and crew have done a tremendous job today. Schrader's driven his heart out, but really, Elliott has just been too tough. They really have, Mike, and I talked to Schrader yesterday some, and, and he talked that everything has seemed to gel with the team a little better. Uh, they know what better he likes uh, and he can work better with them and they have proved today that things are going together much better from the Goodyear Blimp America a look at Bill Elliott down the front straightaway with four laps to go Elliott heading off into the corner moving up on one of the slower cars Now we'll take a look back to find Kenny Schrader down this straightaway. Here's Schrader moving around a slower car, some seven seconds behind the race leader. Behind them in third, Davey Allison trying to drive away from Jeff Bodine. Allison. Going to come up with a super finish here today. And here, across the stripe, Bill Elliott. Three laps to go. He laps past Sterling Marlin. We have Davey Allison now, Mike. He has opened up a little bit on Jeff Bodine. Quite a bit, for perhaps not enough to catch Kenny Schrader. A look at Davey as he whistles past. Three to go, and a signal from Harold Kinder, the NASCAR chief starter. The interval seems to be about the same between first, second, and third. About the same distance, Mike. I am trying to remember back to when Bill Elliott
at last won a close race. Usually when Bill Elliott wins, they're not very close. Um, he gets everything together and he's very, very hard to beat. Daytona, I suppose, is the last close one uh, that he won. But usually that car will get out front and it will dominate. Yeah, but that's where he said, Mike, he wasn't running very good. I know. Huh? <laughs> you forgot that. Now, in all seriousness, just three weeks ago, Bill Elliott beat Rick Wilson by about the width of a bumper. But Wilson really came on strong and ran with Bill those last 30 or 40 laps. But Elliott, when he gets out front and is gone, like he is today, it's an impressive sight, and it's one that just frustrates the other race team. Two to go. Kenny Schrader, the second-place car, can hold what he has some seven seconds behind the race leader and know that he's driven a tremendous race today. So Harold Kinder readies the white flag with a red-headed driver from Dawsonville, Georgia. There's his crew, white flag for Bill Elliott. We'll follow him around this final time. Have you ever seen anybody just look so calm and composed in the race car? He doesn't wrestle with the wheel. He doesn't get the car out of shape. Now, Bill drives. Bill never drives sideways. Uh, Bill is a good chassis man, and, and he adjusts that race car to drive comfortable for him. And I think that's one of the things that makes his team so good, that he is such a good chassis man. Kenny Schrader, car number 25, a second place machine. Seven seconds behind. Elliott up and over the tunnel turn. Heading down the short shoot. And Labonte will lose a spot to Mark Martin on this final lap. As Elliott heads for turn number three. The final corner. And the final mile of the AC Spark Plug 500. It will go to the Coors Belling for Thunderbird. His 27th career Winston Cup victory. Bill Elliott takes the checkered flag. Very impressive run, Mike. Kenny Schrader comes across the stripe for second. Looking now for third, Davey Allison by some 10 car lengths over Jeff Bodine will finish in the third position. Bodine will be the fourth place car. A winner here last month, his second top five finish of the season at Pocono Raceway. And there's the victory lap for Bodine. Six to Darrell Waltrip today. Finishing seventh, Morgan Shepard. Eighth unofficially, Mark Martin. Ninth will be Alan Kulwicki. And Terry Labonte holds off Harry Gant for 10. And in the battle for rookie of the race, Brad Knopsinger beats Kenny Bouchard by some three car lengths. Let's go to Bob Heiss. Two straight wins. That's a great way to start the second half of the season. Yeah, it's about the best way I know of. <laughs> Were there any problems at all out there today? No, really. We we had a couple of little problems, but it was only you know it was only minor. We had you know we had a couple of tire problems, but it was nothing. You know, with the rain last night, it washed all the water out, all the rubber off the racetrack, and. Uh, uh, you know, I think everybody was kind of in the same shape. You were just, you know, you were kind of out there running and uh, uh, laying down new rubber. But yeah, you're having to race at the same time, so it just abuses the tires a little more. But uh, basically, no problem. It was a kind of a day, too. You had to change a lot of strategy. You had to think about possible rain early in the morning and then the tire situation. work. So the NASCAR and Speedway officials congratulating Bill Elliott. Come on, guys, let him out of there. Here's our winner, and you've watched Bill Elliott go flag to flag coverage of the AC Spark Plug 500. Car owner Harry Melling, crew chief Ernie Elliott, and engine builder Dan Elliott, the chassis man. And Elliott comes to the podium. Pat Patterson is with the winner. Well, con congratulations, my friend. He's going to take a seat, and I think I will, too. Bill, what a great, great race. Car never missed a lick all day.
they never miss all day long. You know, I got back in the pack and the car didn't run that good up off the corner, but it just drove so good through the corner. You know, Daryl and the 25 and the 5 car and all them guys, they kill me so bad right up off the corner. I'd have to wait till them for them to make a mistake before I could ever get by them. But once I got ahead of them, my car was working good enough and would stay so consistent that it, it, it just run all the way. You did not like the sticker tires. The scuff tires had to be uh, your choice for the day. The stickers would have made that big a difference. Well, we blistered one left rear earlier in the race. I told Ernie, I said, let's just stick with the, with the scuff stuff because after about, seemed like about 15 laps, their cars really give up, and my car had stayed about the same. You know, I saw Richard, and he could come at me for just a few laps, and then it looked like he couldn't do nothing from that point on, but I don't know what happened to him. Ernie commented a few minutes ago that the rain last night really did, really did help as far as, uh, you know, cleaning the racetrack off and cleaning the dirt off of it. Was that, uh, was that a major factor in, in your success this afternoon? Well, I don't know if that really was, but it, it really changed the racetrack for a lot of people. And it made a lot of difference as far as what was going on, you know, later on in the day. It seemed like the track did change with the light set of tires we got on the car was probably the best set I had all day as far as getting back to the way I was at the first of the race because I missed some of it a little later. Three races in a row. You got it going good this second half of the season. Well, if I can just keep it rolling and keep everything going, I think, you know, the Coors Motorcraft Thunderbird will be there at the end. All right, last question now. Everybody wants to know, what is what is this beard we see on this face? Well, I burned my face a little bit last week when I wrecked up at Seattle, Washington, and I'm just afraid to shave it until it gets completely better because the skin's suspended. Well, congratulations on a great win here, Pocono. Looks like I'll have to go shave now. There you go. <laughs> Well, he may look a little scruffy, but uh, being in victory lane, what a show today. Good race for Bill Elliott. Dominant in the second half here today. And we'll take a look at the top ten. Bill Elliott, the winner. Ken Schrader in the Chevrolet, second, some seven seconds back. Davey Allison, a spirited drive. That car just wasn't right the start of the day, but he came home and brought it home, got it to the front, and finished third. Jeff Bodine winding up fourth in his Chevrolet, the winner last month. And Darrell Waltrip having a good, strong race uh, for Jeff Hammond and crew, finishing in the fifth position. Sixth today, Morgan Shepard, the pole sitter. Mark Martin, after that tire stop, uh, is unofficially shown up here in the seventh position. Eighth to Alan Kulwicki, who started third. Terry Labonte faded to ninth at the finish and just narrowly beat Harry Gant for that tenth spot. Dale Earnhardt was 11th. Ricky Rudd and Rick Wilson also finished on the lead lap today. And Sterling Marlin was a lap down 14th position. We'll go to Bob Heiss with the runner-up in today's 500. Bob? Right, second place finisher, Ken Schrader, right here, getting a little uh, drink of something to cool himself off. What a great run for the Folders team once again at this track. Well, I tell you what, uh, we weren't never quite as good as we needed to be all day, but, uh, you know, when we come into to a series of stops there at the end without a bunch of yellows in between, the Folders team just kind of jockeyed us around. They took us from, like, sixth on up to second there, and uh, we were just able to hold on then. Did you have any close calls at all during the day? No more than the normal 30 or 40 you have every 500 mile race. Well, it's still a great run for this team. The Harry Hyde and Folgers team's always real strong here. Well, I'll tell you what, this is never one of my favorite racetracks. Uh, in fact, I just didn't like it at all until I got hooked up with uh, Harry Hyde and Dennis Conner and, and the Folgers team because uh, they flat got this place figured out. What about Talladega next week? Well, I kind of like that place now. That's a whole different deal. <laughs> yeah, so we're looking forward to that. Okay, thanks a lot, Ken. Kenny Schrader, the second place finisher. And it is a throng in victory lane as Bill Elliott is congratulated and receives the accolades of victory. Boosts his career winnings up into the neighborhood of $7.3 million since he began Winston Cup racing in 1976. For Ernie and Dan and their dad George and that whole crew from down in Dawsonville, Georgia. They do things a little bit in, in secrecy, I would guess, since most of these teams are based in the Carolinas. They're one of a very few teams down in Georgia. And what they learn, they kind of keep for themselves, and boy, they have really done well. So Elliot, the race winner. Ron Bouchard, final comment? Well, I think it was a good race, Mike, and I think we see Bill Elliott just what he's made of. Uh, their team works good together. Bill does the rest, and, and today they were just flawless all day long. Very exciting race, competitive all the way down to the field. Elliot, the winner. Schrader, second. Davey Allison, third. Let's go to Pat Scanlon. And you know the fans saw a flawless race as well here as Elliot crossed the line. The fans along the grandstands here exploding into applause. All in all, a great day here at Pocono Raceway. And we want to thank the viewers along our Viewers Choice Network for their phone calls. We hope we answered some of your questions and that you enjoyed our flight of flag coverage. Mike? For Ron 
Bouchard, Pat Scanlon, Pat Patterson, and Bob Heiss. This is Mike Joy congratulating Bill Elliott on his 27th career Winston Cup victory in the AC Spark Plug 500. Thanks for being with us.